I am Darth Volga. Defy me and get a boot up your ass. Ah, Princess Leia, off my helmet. R2-D2, shut up, you overgrown butt plug. I am Darth Volga. Luke, I am your father. Your mother was the worst <laughs> I ever had. If she gave good head, you wouldn't even be here. When she dropped her pants, it looked like she had a Wookiee and a leg lock. <laughs> Lando Carissi, we meet again. Shouldn't you be sitting in the back of the ship, you f***? And you, Jabba the Hutt, you fat bastard. You can't even see your dick anymore, can you? I am Darth Volga. Yoda, make like a gerbil and crawl up Han Solo's ass. You look like a scrotum with ears. My balls are as big as the Death Star. Obi-Wan, you limped gold f***. You can't even get it up anymore. Ha! I am Darth Volga, motherfucker of the universe. Thank you for calling. This is Tom just speaking. How may I help you? I stayed in your hotel in uh, Niagara Falls. Mm -hmm. About a month ago, I was on my honeymoon and stuff. Well, I stole a few items. I I'm feeling a little guilty about it. Um, hold on. Let me transfer to corporate services. Okay. Corporate service group. My name is Dean, and I understand there's a matter of some items from one of our hotels. I stole some items while I was staying at the in the Niagara Falls region. Okay. And I, I found God recently, and I'm uh, feeling a little guilty about it. Okay. Uh, I stole uh, uh, the bottle of shampoo and conditioner and the free shower cap and hand lotion. All right. And a couple of the towels. Okay. As far as um, the consumables, the shower cap, the um, shampoo and conditioner, etc., um, those items are for your use, and you are free to take those with you if you'd like. As far as the towels, they do ask that you don't take the towels with you. If you'd like to return it, I can provide the address for the hotel, and you can send it to them. Well, I wish I stopped there, but I didn't. Uh, I also stole the coffee maker, and, and uh, we were going on a long trip, so I figured I needed the blankets and pillows. Okay. Those items should <sighs> be returned to the hotel. I can offer you that address. And, and the sheets, because they got a little messy. I, I was embarrassed to leave them behind. You said you stayed at the Niagara Falls? Uh, I, well, I'm a little nervous, so I don't really want to give too much info okay. at this time. Well, I don't even have your name, sir, and there are several hundred people that stay in that hotel a day, and I can provide you that address without ever knowing your name. Well, I also uh, stole the lamp and the TV remote. Well, I'm sure the management would appreciate those items being returned. And, and, and the fax machine. I feel a little better that I'm at least telling somebody about this. And would you like to return the items to the hotel? I needed some money, so I sold them. I, I still have the love seat and the curtains that I stole, but that's about it. Okay. And you might notice in three, uh, room 302 that the TV doesn't work too well because I was I was trying to yank it out of the wall, and uh, I don't know, there's a loose connection or so. I also stole some of the uh, toilet paper from the maid's cart, but I figured that was just free. That's since an item you're free to use as you wish. Um, would you like to return the items that you still have? Um, I would need to know which hotel so I can offer you that address. Yeah, well... Um, Honestly, I, I still have the soda machine. I was a bitch to get out of the hotel. Hello? Yes, sir. Hi. I, I'm just trying to get all this uh, off my uh, chest. Cause the what? only way for me to help you, sir, is to provide you with the proper address for the hotel that these items belong to. Um, would you like that address? And if so, which hotel was it? Well, um, if, if I told you, it would be very obvious because we also um, uh, took one of the courtesy buses on a little joy ride. It wasn't easy to get the ice machine in that. I guess I just needed to tell someone this. I, I I really can't afford to actually replace the items. Hello? Yes. I mean, I could possibly uh, turn the couch, I guess. That's still in my living room. How much do you think all these items would cost? That I do not know. Um, as far as how much an ice machine costs, I do not know. I can offer you the address of the hotel, and that would offer you an outlet to return the items you still have. Um, well, actually, I could use that address because, uh, Consuelo, the maid, um, she's going to need to find her way back to the hotel. I, well, I kidnapped her and I, I let her go today. She was in the basement for a month. Oh, my God, I feel so good. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh slow down. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah, play with my balls. Play with my balls. Oh, that feels so good. Yeah, just roll them around in a circle. Oh, my God. I love it when you... Uh-oh, slow down. <laughs> Don't move. I'll go get you a towel. <laughs> we leave you. Now with the sounds of Montana. And me making my face look like a glazed donut. <laughs> Before I get back to my wife. The sounds of the elusive bearded clan. <laughs> and me trying to shuck the hell out of that bearded clan. <laughs> I usually don't say things like that, but... I'll leave you this Sunday morning with the sounds of me giving her the old pile drive. <laughs> That's the one where I crouch over her, push down real hard in a pile driving motion. <laughs> so now, pictures and sounds of me and the pile drive <laughs> on my mistress in Montana. On the road, the road I prefer... <laughs> Pictures now of the Hershey Highway. <laughs> I visited that in Montana lots, the Hershey Highway. My wife often thought I was fishing on my trips to Montana. And it's true I was. Here's the sound of the trouser trout <laughs> coming out of my trousers as I pound some ass. <laughs> now the sounds of me pounding ass with my Montana crotch rat. <laughs> we leave you now. The sounds of me and my mistress and me shooting a tray up in that piece. <laughs> and now finally, the sounds of my mistress hobbing my knob. <laughs> we don't often leave you with the sounds of knob hobbing. <laughs> I figured this is a good time to leave. And now the sounds of me and my knob being hopped. <laughs> Charles Kuralt on the road. Hob. Knob. <laughs> now the sounds of... A purple helmet warrior <laughs> going into battle again against the dreaded bearded clan. Montana crotch rat. <laughs> yes, the Montana crotch rat. God, I wish she shaved. A little personal hygiene in the groin area. So it wouldn't look so much like a possum. <laughs> Woman looks like roadkill. <laughs> looks like the last time I saw woodchuck caught in a combine. <laughs> All red and brown and whatnot. Now the sounds of a woodchuck being caught in a combine. Leave you. <laughs> I mentioned she looks like she had Einstein's head in a leg lock. <laughs> I should trim that. First time I made love to her. Pulled those panties down and looked like Fidel Castro eating a London broil. <laughs> I used to have a lot of sex in my car. <laughs> yes, gave her Spanish fly once. I found her on the gear shift. <laughs> now the sounds of my girlfriend on the gear shift. <laughs> we leave you. <laughs> yes. I just wish she was a little better with the hygiene. <laughs> Sort of looked like when you take two big pieces of silly putty, slap them together, and throw them on the floor of a barber shop. <laughs> All pink and hairy. Two guys getting kicked hard right in the crotch with no protection. Oh, oh that got him! Oh, that got him! If he wasn't chained up, he would have fallen down. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Oh. That's got to be it. Dude, that's got to oh be it. Oh, my God. All right, let's see if we can't uh, get a good uh, kick in from Grandma. Grandma is lining up. Oh. 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 He's down. He's down. He's down. He's down. You don't taunt grandma like that. Come on. She got the bullseye. Grandma still got a chance, right? <laughs> Let's hear it for grandma. Grandma, put him down. Good afternoon, library. Hi, I was wondering if you could help me. We'll try. Okay, my son came home with a uh, list of books that he needs to read for his fourth grade class. Okay. Why don't I switch you to the children's and she can see if she can help you with one you might need. Ah, oh, thanks a lot. Sure. Hold on, please. Children's Department, Karen speaking. Hi, Karen. I need to uh, come into the library and pick up a few books for my son. Okay. He came home with a reading list from his fourth grade class. Uh-huh. Uh, do you have Harry Beaver Goes to the Beach? Harry Beaver Goes to the Beach. Doesn't sound familiar. Doesn't mean we don't have it. Is there any way you could look that up? Or? Yeah. Okay. Do you have others that you're looking for? Or is this? Yeah, I guess there's a whole uh, Harry Beaver uh, collection. Okay. Now, he doesn't sound familiar, but that's not 100% certain. I guess he's a new author out of Seattle. Okay. R writes uh, children's books. Okay. It's uh, Harry Beaver Goes to the Beach. Mm-hmm. Harry Beaver on the Dyke. The Dyke. Okay. Harry Beaver Gets Wood. Gets Wood. And finally, Harry Beaver and the One-Eyed Wonder Worm. Okay. Why don't you hold on just a second, and I'll check the computer to see if we've got any of these, okay? All right. Thanks a lot. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Beaver collection. <laughs> Shh. He's got to come back. Shh. Thank you for waiting. Um, I checked our computer here, and we don't own any of them, and I, I also wanted to see if anybody in the region has it. Has has any of them, and it doesn't. No, nobody's coming up with any of the Harry Beaver books. That's uh, awfully strange. Uh, it, if it's if it's really new, it may just be that nobody has it yet. So no one has Harry Beaver yet. No, it doesn't look that way. Harry Beaver doesn't come up on the computer. No. All right. Do you have any of the uh, Bobby series? Bobby. Now I'm not familiar with Bobby either. Oh, uh, there's one book on this list. It's uh, Bobby goes. Let me read his writing. Bobby. Bobby goes muff diving. Hmm. Do you have an author for these at all? An author. Uh, yeah. Let me see here. Uh, oh, uh, Anita Bushlicker. Uh, hello, ma'am. This is Lieutenant Colombo. Uh, I got a couple of questions to ask you. Uh, could could you shove your fist up my? <laughs> I'd love it if you could just stick your your fist up my. <laughs> Listen, get your husband over here. We'll pop my eye out, and he could skull me. Could you do that, please? Just skull me. I love that, uh, Mrs. Colombo. She pulls out a big, <laughs> rips my eye out, and just shoves that thing right to my brain. I love it. All right, thank you. Hey, oh, oh, what? Pardon me, one more thing, man, one more. Bury your boot up my <laughs> Could you do that? And could you just grab my <laughs> and twist it like a pretzel? I'd love if you grab my <laughs> grab my shriveled old Columbo <laughs> and twist that thing like a pretzel. Okay, ma'am, I gotta get back to the precinct now, but... Oh, oh before I leave, one more oh, thing. No. Could you do, man, one more thing. Put my in a vice. <laughs> Could you just clamp down on my b and squeeze them till they come out of the hole that in my head that used to have an eye? Ah, <laughs> uh, Colombo, don't you have to go uh, arrest Martin Landau? <laughs> uh, I was in a series once uh, uh, with Martin Landau, and uh, after the show, after the shoot, as they call it, I jammed my fist so far up his. <laughs> I actually pulled out his prostate. It was, it was wonderful. We used to film at Universal Studios, and we all get together in the commissary and pound each other. <laughs> and <laughs> pound <laughs> each other's <laughs> with the zucchini. <laughs> I can't take this. Hello, 
Harvey Cross, and I'm calling you because Chase Manhattan Bank USA, your Visa MasterCard company, is offering you a no-cost three-month trial period for accidental death insurance of up to $1 million accidental death insurance for accidents involving whoa. transportation. Whoa! Wait, whoa, whoa, accidental death insurance? Yes, for accidents involving public transportation with... Whoa, wait, this is good stuff. I was uh, thinking of killing myself, actually. So my my fam this would be good for my family. So all I have to do is, um, you know, uh, make it an accident and they'll collect. <laughs> I guess so. Really? <laughs> no, I'm totally serious. Okay. So let's say I, I just go out on the street and I uh, just put my head under like a, a public uh, uh, bus. In which I hope you wouldn't do that, but I, I really don't want to live anymore, and I just want my family uh, taken care of. So this is very exciting. Very exciting. So how much money can I make if I like put my head under a bus? It's covered up to you're covered up to one million dollars, sir. Uh, uh, trust me, I'll make it look like an accident. I mean, it's snowing up here now. I'll just slide under a damn bus. It'll be quick and easy. Are you an authorized user of this car? Yes. Okay. Can't you hear the excitement in my voice? I can finally take care of my family. Now here's how the offer works. Just before your three month trial period is over, we'll send you a reminder of the coverage so you can decide if you want to. Get Wait a minute. All I need to know is when. When is this active so I can end my life? Um, after it's a three month trial period. So three months from now I could I could put my head under a bus. That's up to you, sir. Wow. And get a million dollars for my family. Yes, sir. Nice. If you decide to continue the premium which is nine dollars and ninety five cents. Wait, wait. To you. No 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 no. After three months it's all over, so why would I have to continue with premiums? You don't understand. If I if this is a real deal, I'm I'm out of here in three months. Go on. Go on. That's up to you, sir. Now, let's say I jump in front of a train. Will that be covered? It's public, um, it's automobile accident, sir. So I'll be covered? I guess so. Do you think it's easier to jump in front of a train or let a bus run over your head? Whichever one you prefer. I would rather get it over quickly. I'm thinking the train going really fast would, would do the deal. Okay, sir, I need to know who will be the primary insurer for your coverage. I mean, you think my head would be just smashed hard? Hello? Okay, hello. Don't worry about it. No. Okay. That's not interesting. No. Forget it. Hello? 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 You know, I stole the Playboy with Florida in it. No, wait. Florida. No, 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 no. Look, I got that big pack of hot dogs stapled <laughs> to the back of my neck. <laughs> James! Where's JJ? <laughs> Thelma. <laughs> Thelma was You said Florida. Oh, Everyone man. heard it. <laughs> Opie had the hospital Florida when he was a kid. <laughs> Come on, everyone heard it. <laughs> Opie! <laughs> Come here, give me some love. <laughs> Little brown sugar, Opie! <laughs> James! That was only until Wheezy came along. <laughs> all right. The all beauty right. that was Wheezy. All right. Oh, if only I could be George Jefferson. <laughs> I'll move you on up. <laughs> <laughs> now you've gone too far, man. You said it, man. Uh, yeah, uh, how about that Aunt Esther, <laughs> Opie? Shut up. <laughs> Come here, heathen. <laughs> I could never squeeze out syrup out of that Aunt Jemima bottle without thinking, wow, what a hot babe. Yeah, I'd, I'd lose my syrup. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you heard it here, folks. Opie, hots for Florida from good times. Stole the Playboy. That, that Playboy I never saw, but I guess it's in Opie's personal collection. The one with Florida. James, I'm naked and play more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Son of a... Uh. <laughs> James! <sighs> now, JJ, I have company this evening. <laughs> Hope is coming over. After James got killed, remember that? Yeah. She would have uh, liked a guy like you. <laughs> Shut up. You'd, you'd have uh, fit good in the projects. You'd have Where'd to suffer died? the scrutiny of uh, of Michael, the younger brother. Yes, <laughs> yes. Remember how angry he was. That's right. I don't think Opie would have cut the mustard with <laughs> <laughs> Michael. <laughs> his hair and everything. Uh, well, Roman, Mama, <laughs> why are you dating that white boy? <laughs> He's very nice. Now, come on.
Let mama go out with Opie. James. <laughs> mama, he's the devil. <laughs> well, he sure is the devil in bed. <laughs> Wait till I tell Walona what he did to me. <laughs> <laughs> of course he can't stack up to James where it counts. <laughs> you know, this picking on someone is not that fun after all. <laughs> I always thought it was fun to pick on people. Oh, it's a blast. <laughs> Come on this side. <laughs> uh, Jerry. You ever get the uh, rusty trombone? <laughs> what? There's all kinds of names for things. What? Jerry, uh, okay, I'll be being very, very careful yeah, is yeah. the rusty trombone. It's uh, you're getting your salad tossed, and uh, the girl reaches around and uh, starts playing uh, the trombone. <laughs> <laughs> Holy! That God. is the rusty trombone. <laughs> Perhaps one of the most interesting words in the English language today is the word fuck. Out of all of the English words that begin with the letter F, fuck is the only word that is referred to as the F word. It's the one magical word. Just by its sound can describe pain, pleasure, hate, and love. Fuck, as most words in the English language, is derived from German, the word frichen, which means to strike. In English, fuck falls into many grammatical categories. As a transitive verb, for instance, John fucked Shirley. As an intransitive verb, Shirley fucks. Its meaning is not always sexual. It can be used as an adjective, such as John's doing all the fucking work. As part of an adverb, Shirley talks too fucking much. As an adverb enhancing an adjective, Shirley is fucking beautiful. As a noun, I don't give a fuck. As part of a word, abso fucking lutely or in fucking credible. And as almost every word in a sentence, fuck the fucking fuckers. As you must realize, there aren't too many words with the versatility of fuck. As in these examples describing situations such as fraud, I got fucked at the used car lot. Dismay, aw oh, fuck it. Trouble. I guess I'm really fucked now. Aggression. Don't fuck with me, buddy. Difficulty. I don't understand this fucking question. Inquiry. Who the fuck was that? Dissatisfaction. I don't like what the fuck is going on here. Incompetence. He's a fuck off. Dismissal. Why don't you go outside and play hide and go fuck yourself? I'm sure you can think of many more examples. With all of these multi-purpose applications, how can anyone be offended when you use the word? We say use this unique, flexible word more often in your daily speech. It will identify the quality of your character immediately. Say it loudly and proudly. Fuck you! Hello, Mark. Yo! Are you ready to play Hi, Mom, I'm in Jail? Sure. All right, now, what are you going to tell your mom uh, when she gets on the phone? I, I'm going to tell her I was with a couple of prostitutes. Wow, that could be pretty good. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, I haven't been to jail in, like, about eight years, so. So she thinks you, you've cleaned up your act, huh? Yeah, and I'm happily married, you know? Uh -oh. oh, and you're married, and you got caught with the prostitutes? Yeah. Let's give your mom a call, man. Okay, cool. Ma make this good. Here we go. Yeah. Ma! What? Listen, it's Mark. Yeah. Listen, I'm in jail. What? Yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> I, I got caught with a couple of prostitutes. Who's this? Mark. It's your son, Mark. Where are you? I'm in jail. Downtown. Don't, don't tell Gina. I need you to come bail me out. Who? You. With what? Oh, get away or something. I don't know. You, you can't. Uh, don't call. Don't call my house. Oh, uh, this call's being monitored, ma'am. Okay. Police department. I didn't know if she was joking with me or if she's serious or what. No, we, Mom, serious. We've set, oh, jeez. We've set the bail at $5,000, ma'am. That will be cash. 5000 Yes. What did he do? He was found with a couple of prostitutes, one of which was a transvestite. 
And uh, it's a serious charge, man. Will someone be coming to pick him up? Ma, what? Can you come? We got to clear this up before it makes the paper tomorrow morning. Who am I speaking to? This is Officer Jenkins. Officer Jenkins. I'll have to call his brother. I'll call his brother and see if I can get the money. We uh, we know also the prostitute has uh, tested positive for uh, the AIDS virus, which is another problem he's going to have to deal with. Hello, ma'am? Yes, I'm here. Oh. Where, where's Sonny Boy? Are you speaking up uh, to your mother? Yeah, ma. What? Ma, I, I, <laughs> I don't know how to tell you how this happened. <laughs> oh. I was with the brain. You know the brain? Oh, yeah? Yeah, I picked him up with a couple of them. Oh. <laughs> it's not a laughing matter, son. I know, I know. Your mother sounds very upset. <laughs> you try to raise your kids. You do your best. I'm sure you did your best, didn't you, ma'am? Yeah. And look at what happens. Oh, my God. She's so upset. I can't do this anymore. Oh. Ma! I can't do this. Ma! Hey, Ma! Hey, excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, Happy Mother's Day, Ma! <laughs> it's a joke. This was the worst. Joke. Oh, I'm going to burn in hell for this, man. <laughs> oh, no. Ma! He, he, she he, knows she's all right. He's fine. He's, he's not in jail. It's only... <laughs> Ma, you're live on the radio. You could smack him in the head. <laughs> Mom, you still there? Yes. Talk to us, Mom. Look how upset. Oh, <laughs> my God, dude. <laughs> I got to make a phone call. Dude. <laughs> Did you know she was going to get that upset? No. <laughs> oh, my Usually God. Usually I can joke with him, you know. I'm always joking with him. Oh, oh no. Oh, I'm you, always you joking with him. Oh, we feel, we <laughs> feel horrible now. <laughs> you got to smooth things over and call us back, man. All right. All right, bro. Oh, no. Good Take luck. Care, guys. Good, Good luck. luck. Bye. Oh, no. That one didn't work well. Oh, my God. Three. Drown, drown, Cuban drown, drown, Cuban drown, yeah. Cuban drown, 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 Cuban drown. Refugees, give them a hand. Roll for days just to open up a taco stand. Twenty Cubans float on a wine bottle cork. Guantanamo Bay is just a five minute walk. We took all your relatives, stay away. Look at Mama Cedar, she's as big as a boat. You shove a motor up her ass if you thought she'd float. Turn around. Cuban drown, drown, Cuban drown, yeah. Cuban drown, 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 Cuban drown. We talked about the guys from QVC before. They're always selling the uh, Beanie Babies and memorabilia sports stuff. Yeah, they, they have the tough-sounding voices. Oh, the guy, the one, one guy yelling all the time, <laughs> virgins, 22-year-old virgins, <laughs> order now. These are going to go fast. Look at this one. Let's bring it up. Let's open her up. We like to do this every so often. You're not going to find anything better than this, people. Limited time, and you get a Mark McGuire rookie card <laughs> with every one. 22-year-old virgin, McGuire rookie card. We're giving them away $22. <laughs> That's a dollar a year, 22-year-old virgins. Look, I can't get anything in here. <laughs> We're talking, you won't be able to tell the difference between the front or the back. It's like two balloon knots. 
Wow, what the hell? And you get Flopsy Wopsy, the beanie baby <laughs> that's been discontinued since 92. A Maguire rookie card, a Sosa rookie card, and a 22-year-old virgin. They're going to go fast, people. Look, I'm trying. I can't get anything in here. Take it home, work it. Limited edition. Did you hear? Limited edition. <laughs> For the love of God! <laughs> Hello? My name is Bruno Tatalia. I have a proposition. <laughs> I have a tractor trailer full of little Furby dolls. All right. I need them to be distributed. I have no means. I would like to know if you would like to maybe enter a partnership with me and a few of my friends. And what do I get out of it? You get, let's say, a cut of the action. Plus, if we can ever do a favor for you, we will be there for you uh -huh. to help you and maybe your family. All right. What do you want me to do with the dolls? You want me to hold them? What do you want me to do? You hold on and distribute them. All right. For me and my family. How much for a doll? We're talking $1,000 each doll. That ain't happening. You will be in charge of advertising. Can't happen. I, I can't even get 300 a doll now. You will get $1,000 a doll. Uh-huh. Of which... My organization will get 98% of the profits. You will keep two. And your legs. <laughs> You're funny. Funny how? Funny how how funny I make you laugh? Yeah. Why don't you come to my house and keep talking like you're talking? I will come to your house. Yeah, come on. I will come to your house. Me three, and maybe... three, three. Come right now. I will Tell come. me what you're going to do to my legs. Maybe you're a joke, Me bro. and a few of my If you my only boys. knew who the f*** you're talking we'll to. We'll come over there. I know who I'm talking to, pal. Come over here. All right? You want me to come there with my boys? <laughs> oh, you got me so scared. Do you understand me? I don't understand nothing. I saying. believe we have an agreement. Punk? And we'll you're talk able to on keep walking. You call me a punk? You a punk. You're a punk, punk. Come to my house. You, I'll come to your house. Come to my house right now. I'll come to your doll seller. Three, your three, doll three. seller. Avenue. Come to my house, pussy. I'm there, you jack off. Pussy. You're a pussy, you jack off. <laughs> so you sell my dolls? Come to Thousand dollars. <laughs> You're a funny guy, but come to my house. I'll be there. N right now. I'll b I'm coming. Apartment 3E. All right. Now. I'm there. I'll kill you and your mother, your father, whoever the f*** you want to bring. I'm coming now. Are you going to me or am I going to f*** you in the <laughs> Which one? <laughs> it depends what your mother wants to do. Which one, sir? Whatever your mother feels like doing. Sucking my d your d whatever she wants to do. So I get to put my up your asshole. No, you're going to put up your mother's asshole. All right, that sounds great. Come right now. I'm coming. Right now. Sounds great, my friend. Bring your mother, though. Uh, buh bye It's Ivory and her amazing egg-shooting twat. Of course, today is the egg-shooting day. Uh, Dave, the blind guy, is here. He's going to attempt to catch some of the eggs that are being shot out. Yeah, look, she's already loaded up. She's got one in the clip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she's loading, uh, you know what? She's leaning back. Whoa! Oh, wait a minute! <laughs> Six feet! Hold on a minute! Oh, that's eight All feet. Right, Ivory has reloaded. Oh, that one. Yeah, that one just over eight feet. About eight feet. Two inches, I would say. We got the blind guy about six feet away from uh, ground zero. Okay, here we go. Dave, the blind guy. Oh, yeah! He got it! He got it! Oh, what a what a day for sport. Good eyes, good eyes. Oh, sorry. We're talking about Louis Anderson. Um, we've stated in the past that he's not funny. Don't you have to be funny to be have the label a uh, comedian? Yeah, but I don't know. I guess his stuff is so tragic that it becomes funny or something. That's what it is. People laugh a lot of times because they're uncomfortable. He's going to be hosting the new Family Feud. Anthony. Family Feud. That's what you need. Remember how, what happened to the last host? He hung Didn't himself. Didn't he hang himself? Yeah. <laughs> this guy, I don't know. Louis sounds more depressed than Ray Combs <laughs> ever did. Hey, welcome to the feud. I'm fat and I was abused as a child. All right, look at the family is coming to the table. Give me a kiss, huh? <laughs> you have any food stuck between your teeth I could suck out while I kiss you? I'm starving. I haven't eaten in seconds. Gee. All right, if we could get the first two contestants up here, 
We surveyed our audience the top five answers on the board to this question. What does your father hit you with? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Louie, uh, a baseball bat? Uh, no, well, that's the number two answer. My father hit me with a baseball bat. All right, you have a chance to steal. <laughs> um, Louie, is it a whiskey bottle? Yeah! Yes, it's a whiskey bottle. <laughs> That's right. He lobbed it at my head after calling me a big fat bastard. <laughs> oh, there's my Louis hysterical. What a scream! <laughs> All right, next question. Surveyed our audience. Top three answers on the board. This question. What was the cruelest thing you were called in school by your little classmates? Turned you into an introverted eating freak machine. <laughs> uh, big fat tubby marshmallow cellulite, 200 pounds of chewed bubblegum ass. <laughs> and that's the number one answer. I never knew what the end of that was because my head was always in the gymnasium toilet after, <laughs> right when they started saying it. Then I'd have to go to the cafeteria and eat uh. Twinkies and ho hos. <laughs> And feed this 450-pound job of the hut mess freak show ass. <laughs> but I've turned tragedy into comedy. If you find the comedy, give me a call. <laughs> hey, we're playing the feud, family feud. Look who it is. It's the Anderson family. <laughs> My own family coming up. Hi, Dad. How <laughs> Hey, he's going to call me a big, fat, tub-ass, lard-ass again. Hey, this is great stuff, isn't it? Here comes my big, fat, enabling mother. Gee, thanks, Mom. I'm, here I am in the midst of turning tragedy into comedy. Can you feel it, people? <laughs> feel the comedy. Excuse me, have I eaten in two minutes? I'm way past my eating time. Top five answers on the board to this. When do I have to eat? Uh, now? That's right. Now. Right now. Thank you for playing the feud, but I gotta eat. Thank you, Dad. I... <laughs> I gotta tune into that. Hello? Hi. Hi. Bill. Who's this? Pat. Hi, Pat. How are you? Now, this is the wrong bell. Uh, well, Pat, I have some bad news. What? Uh, Pil uh, uh Bill died today. Your kid? Oh, my God. Yeah. It's tragic. Who's this? He was in a car accident today. Oh, no. Yeah. Who is this? This is John. John? Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. I don't believe it. Yeah. I was just talking to him. I know. Where did it happen? Uh, this afternoon. Where? On the highway. Oh, God, love him. Yeah, big, big, big pile up. Well, be sure and give the kids my condolences. <laughs> okay. Well, I gotta go. All right, John. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. It's Hummer time, Hummer time, hum hum, Hummer time, 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 Hummer time. To get down on her knees Don't forget to say please Because it's Hummer time Tuesday is a boring day So take this tip from O and A Have a ball, take two, they're small It's an R all free for all <laughs> Spit or swallow, it's okay Watch those teeth, it causes pain Hey, don't worry about the taste It's Hummer time Can I see some Mr. 
Uh, this is he. How you doing? My name is Jacette, and I'm calling from... What's happening, Jacette? How you doing? All right. My name is Jacette, and I'm calling from... Cabinet we facing. Right on, Jacette. And the purpose of my call is to tell you about a service that we are providing for homeowners. Ah! I know that. The electric voice box. It was actually an accident. What do you mean? Well, some chick I was with was using a dildo. <laughs> and I accidentally went down on her and realized I could talk. <laughs> Run, right. you little f***. Hit the ball. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, bada, hey, bada, hey, bada, f*** you. <laughs> Hey, babe, have you seen your pal Lou Gehrig down there in hell? No, that pussy was a good guy. He went up to heaven. He did, huh? Yeah. <laughs> he died of that Lou Gehrig disease, you he, know. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, what are the odds of that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, nice thing, you little prick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to get together with Billy Martin and Michael Kennedy tonight for happy hour. Oh, really? Billy's driving. <laughs> Billy's driving? You should see Michael's face. It looks like my larynx. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I do. <laughs> whoa, whoa, what's wrong, babe? Uh, babe. I, 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 I just spilled the beer in my voice box. <laughs> my wife's going to kill me. Wait, babe, you're married? I did say I was in hell, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Babe Ruth, everyone. Yesterday, I was working, and I was in my car, and I wanted to respond to something Carol Miller said, and I, it was something positive. So I pulled over and tried to call you guys, and I got such a runaround, 
and I never got through to Carol. Do right, you want us to find Carol for you? Well, yeah, is she around? Sure, hold Can on a hold? sec. Great. N-E-W. Yeah, hi. Um, hi. I'm a, lis- I'm a, a listener, a fan, whatever. I'm yes. trying to reach Carol Miller. Okay. Responding to some stuff she was talking about yesterday. All right, you'll need personnel. Hold on. Okay, thanks. Hello, personnel. May I help you? Yeah, hi. Um, I'm a 20-year listener and a fan of the show, mm-hmm. uh, of the station, rather. Mm-hmm. And um, I was trying to reach Carol Miller yesterday, and unfortunately, I couldn't get through. And I was wondering who I can talk to to try to... Either leave something for her or get a fax number. I, I'd rather talk to somebody, though, but... Please hold. We'll connect you to the jock line. Jock line. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. Uh, jock line. Hi, my name is Cindy Reich, and I'm a, at least a 20-year listener. Hi, Cindy. Who are you looking for? I'm now, looking for Carol Miller, who might not still be there, but I'm at work, well, and I, I tried s- to reach her yesterday, and I couldn't. I don't see her in the jock lounge. Oh, okay. um, hold hold to, on. She, okay. might, she okay. might be in the break room. Hold okay, on a sec, thanks. please. Thank okay. you. Break room, Pete Polina. Hi. Hi. Um, they were trying to connect with Carol Miller if she was in there. Oh, I just saw her go by. I think she went to our office. Hold on. Okay, thank you. Hello, Carol Miller's office. May I help you? Yeah, hi. They're trying to connect with Carol Miller. Carol Miller. And who's this calling? It's a, a 20-year fan of the station who needs to respond to something she was talking about yesterday. Well, I'm sure she'd love to hear from you the things. She's on her way out. Let me see if I can connect you to the okay, garage. If not, I'll leave a message. She can contact me or maybe Let me try to connect you to the garage. Thank she might you. be in her car. Hold on. Thank you. Yeah, garage. Hi, um, they're trying to get Carol Miller so I can respond to her. I'm a 20-year fan. I'm just trying to leave her a message in person if I can. And they said she might be in the garage. Um, actually, I could connect you to her car phone. She just pulled out of here in her Mercedes. Great. Hold Thank on a you. second. Okay. Hello, Carol Miller's car. Carol? No, I'm taking Carol's car up to get her. Oh, okay. Um, Hello. They get, told wait, me I hold, could... hold on, please. Hold okay, on. Thank you. Get out of the way, you son of a bitch! This is Carol Miller's car. Get away. Yes, hold on, please. <laughs> okay. Hello? Is Carol around? I'm a 20-year fan that's just trying to reach her, and they keep trying to find her for me. Hey, well, I'm a 30-year-old con ed worker. You reached the phone booth. How can I help you? Are you serious? Because I was just on the phone with NEW, and they kept connecting me and connecting me and connecting me. Well, they connected me to a phone booth. Great. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Wait, hold Can on. you connect me back? I'll see what w, I can do please. if I hit the thing. Hold on, okay, lady. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is United Flight uh, 36, 7 Heavy. Uh, how can Hello? I help you, yes, is this air traffic control? This I don't United. want air traffic control. I was trying to reach Carol Miller, and they keep yeah. bumping me around. Why are you on the aircraft frequency, ma'am? This is uh, United Flight 7 Heavy. Can you somehow connect me back to Carol Miller's car phone? Cause that's I'm, the last I'm, tra- place. I'm trying to land an airliner, ma'am. Well, I really don't have time well, to Well, it's, it's a crossing of wires. Out. I apologize. Uh, it's not de- my fault. 30 degree flaps. Hold on. 30 degree flaps. Okay. Put the gear down. I'm okay. trying to land an airline. Okay, man. goodbye. Goodbye. I don't have time to. to goodbye. To you. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Mandy. 
Hey, Chad. Hey, what's up? I hear you want to play Hi, Mom, I uh, Got Fired for Masturbating. <laughs> yes, I do. Is she going to buy this? My mom's really gullible. Hold on the line. It's ringing, bro. Good luck. Hello? Mom? Yeah? Um, can you pick me up from work? How come I can't hear you? Can you pick me up from work? Yeah. Um, I got fired. What? I got fired from work today. Can you pick me up? No way. Please, pick me up. What the heck happened? It's kind of embarrassing. What, are you going to tell me? I was in the stock room, and someone... Someone walked in on me when I was masturbating. What? I got caught masturbating in the stock room. Did they have fire? to pick me Did up. They give you a warning right or something? There. What are you, nuts? Just come pick me up, will you, Mom? Chad, you're supposed to do stuff like that in the privacy of your own home. I know, it's embarrassing, Mom. I don't... So where were you, at a payphone or something? No, I'm at work, and, you know, it's, it's, I'm here. You know, everyone's been looking at me and laughing at me and stuff. It's just... Just come pick me up, will you please? All right, all right. You want me to meet you out back? Yeah, just pick me up where you dropped me off this morning. All right, you okay? Well, besides my pride, I'm you know, embarrassed. Just pick me up as soon as you get a chance. All right. Thanks. All right, I'll be there. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh my god, dude! What the hell's wrong with you? How was that? That was awesome, actually. Oh, she got me pissed out. Wow, I can't believe you said that to your own mother. Well, we learned a lot about vaginas today. What can I tell you? And then Lisa just called up. Her doctor agrees that douching is not good for women because it uh, eliminates the protective membrane shield in the vagina. Yes, Captain's Log, Stardate 26609. It's been five hours since the Massengill douche eliminated our protective membrane shield. The stench is overwhelming. Can't believe it. it smells like Uhura after two hours of racquetball. Scotty, Scotty, you've got to get our protective membrane vaginal shield back up. I'm doing the best I can, sir. <laughs> it won't come back. Can't take it much longer. <laughs> <laughs> Must go to the turbo lift. Take me to the cervix. <laughs> Look what's behind us. <laughs> Cling on. Am I the right caller? What were you uh, calling for? Um, Donna Summer tickets. Oh. Donna Summer tickets. Are you a big Donna Summers fan? Yes, but I'm more of a point five fan. Oh, oh boy, oh, here we she go. Knows, she knows here the right things go. to say. Here we go. Let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. You're going to see Donna Summers. You're kidding. Congratulations. Thank you. Matter of fact, uh, we're going to put you in the front row. Front row. What do you say? For Donna Summers. What do you say? I don't believe it. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, what color panties you wearing? I'm wearing a bathing suit. Donna Summer wants to know. What kind of bathing suit are you wearing? A one piece, a thong, bikini? A bikini, I'm sun tanning. Sun tanning. And then by my pool is my radio with .5 on it. Oh boy, hey, she says yeah. it again. Look you know at what? that. Since she's mentioned the station so many times, mm -hmm. I think another prize is in order. You like the disco era? Yes, I the do. The whole disco dancing thing? Absolutely. How about a disco weekend in Las Vegas, Nevada? Yeah! <laughs> That's right. You'll be whisked away to Las Vegas, Nevada to see Donna Summer in Las Vegas. Are you serious? We are serious. I can't believe this. You just have to tell us one thing. What? What's the strangest object you've ever used during sex? The what? Donna wants to know. Nothing. You're a virgin. No. You're a, big, you're a big fat virgin. Yeah. Big fat virgin. And what's your favorite station? Point five. She said it again. Yeah. You know what you're gonna win now? What? A trip on the space shuttle. <laughs> yeah. The first person in space. You're gonna see Donna Summer on the space shuttle. Isn't this fantastic? Oh, this is wonderful. 
Have you ever been on the space shuttle? No, I haven't. Oh, have it's you? beautiful. Yes. Fantastic. It's going to have a big disco ball. Mm -hmm. They're going to decorate it all. Hey, do you know how to dial a phone? Yes. <laughs> What's your favorite sexual position? Hello. Donna wants to know. Hello. <laughs> oh, no. Is she hanging up finally? She's gone. Oh, my God. It took forever. Hey, kids, it's your old pal Barney. No oh boy. No. Oh. Some of your parents are having an awful hard time explaining what President Clinton did and why he's in trouble. Well, it seems Mr. President took a girl into his playroom and touched her boom booms, oh, squeezing them like big fun party balloons. Oh, they wiggled and jiggled and jiggled and wiggled, oh, just like Jello. We. Oh, oh. Then he pulled his pants down and and showed her Mr. Winky Doodle. Oh, she loved Mr. Winky Doodle. So much she gave him a big kiss. Oh, her and Mr. Winky Doodle became very good friends. Oh boy. Oh, then she pulled her pants down and showed the president her hoochie coochie. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh, he even put a big old cigar in her hoochie coochie. Oh, isn't that funny, silly boys and girls? Oh, yes it is. Oh, then one day, Mr. Winky Doodle got so happy from the kisses, he threw up on the president's friend. Oh, Mr. President said he never touched Boom Booms or took out Mr. Winky Doodle or never played with Hoochie Coochie. Oh, he was fibbing, wasn't he, boys and girls? Oh, and when you fib, you get in trouble. So never fib. Oh, and remember, I love you. Comes running when the cops get out of hand. Who thinks the mayor's in the Ku Klux Klan? Yelling and a screaming as he's speaking to a mob. He wears expensive suits, but he doesn't have a job. Reverend Al, Reverend Al, he's your pal. Reverend Al, well, he's sapping off the people in his own community. Why is the white man always picking on me? Got a fat belly and his hair's full of grease We hear his battle cry No justice, no peace The man with a plan who you know you can trust The party little reverend with an ass just like a bus He's Reverend Al, Reverend Al He's your pal, Reverend Al He looks like James Brown with too many calories why is the white man always picking on me? Remember Bernie Getz in the Brawley case? Turn on the TV, you would always see his face. He's speeding in his limo to another homicide to make the network news with the family by his side. Reverend Al, Reverend Al, he's your pal. Reverend Al, on the never-ending search for some good White man always picking on me. Reverend Al. I'm Reverend Al. He's Reverend Al. I'm Reverend Al. He's Tommy Brown. I'm hungry. He's Reverend Al. Reverend Al. He will represent your family and he doesn't charge a fee. Now as long as the footage makes it on the TV. Reverend Al. I'm Reverend Al. He's Reverend Al. I'm your pal. Well, he's your pal. That's right, Reverend he's Al. Reverend Al. I'm Reverend Al. He's a race bait white hating bag of baloney. Now why is the white man always picking on me? Reverend Al, I, yeah I'm Al. He's Reverend Al, I'm Reverend Al. He's your pal, I'm your pal. Yeah, Reverend Al, Reverend Al. Hi, this is Bill, and I feel your pain. That's why I'd like to tell the American people about a way to reduce the stress in your life and help put a smile on your lips. Introducing my all-new Big Willy Pop. Suck on a Big Willy Pop, and you'll see why women everywhere just can't stop. Made with all natural ingredients, my Big Willy Pop has a cream center that is a great source of protein. And moms, you'll be happy to know that once you unzip my package, your kids can suck on my Big Willy Pop all day. Hey, what do you have in your mouth? Nothing? Come on, you can tell me. What are you sucking on? Okay, don't tell anyone. 
It's a big willy pop. Wow, can I taste? Yeah, here, wrap your lips around this. Mmm, mmm. Hey, mm. <laughs> get that back. Mm. Oh, get that back. <laughs> You're sucking on it. Oh, mm. <laughs> So listen and listen good, because I'm only going to say this once. Satisfy your craving and put my big willy pop in your mouth. Excuse me, can I have one? Sure, Chelsea. Come here. <laughs> What the hell? We interrupt this program to bring you a special a bulletin. I'm Tom Brokaw, NBC Nightly News. We continue coverage now of the search for Bernie Getz Squirrel. <laughs> Obviously, a very distraught Bernie Getz. Squirrel's been missing since early Friday morning. The search continuing as the Navy ship the grasp looks at the waters for Bernie Squirrel. We're not sure if this was a flying squirrel, but they are looking for wreckage. <laughs> we will speak later with a very distraught Bullwinkle who will give some insight on the life and times of Bernie Gets' squirrel. <laughs> of course, this squirrel coming from a family plagued by tragedy over the years. You may remember this squirrel's father uh, shot in the head in the park by a little kid with a BB gun. <laughs> that horrible, horrible episode caught on videotape where you see his head go back into the left <laughs> and the mommy squirrel, covered with brains, bravely goes on. <laughs> Here you're seeing footage now of Bernie Squirrel, very young, saluting that <laughs> older squirrel. The search now continuing... Our helicopter is circling above, <laughs> looking for Bernie Squirrel. The family, of course, consoling themselves at the squirrel compound. We cannot find the squirrel. And boy, what the teeth look a lot like the Kennedy family's <laughs> teeth, don't they? Those big, big choppers they have. Of course, uh, Bill Clinton saying, uh, giving all resources to find the squirrel a treasure. So Bernie Gow. Um, Tom? Uh? You sound a little uh, woozy once again today. A little today. groggy, yeah. yeah. Well, I was out looking for the squirrel myself, and another squirrel was in a tree and threw a big, big <laughs> nut down on my head. It hit just right on my temple. I'm a bit groggy. Tom Broga, NBC Nightly News. <laughs> of course, tragic loss. Everybody leaving flowers and nuts at the Getz house as a tribute. As time runs out, I've had the Coast Guard on the phone, and they are saying this is now a search for victims and no longer a rescue. <laughs> Just want to let you know that. The search costing millions of dollars now. The squirrel did not file a flight plan. We have talked with other squirrels who said they would not have even climbed a tree in the haze of Friday morning. Very difficult. Bernie's squirrel missing now for quite a few days as hope runs out at the squirrel compound. You see the patriarch of the squirrel family, that big fat one. You might remember he made the news years back as he came crawling out of a river after a <laughs> female squirrel that was accompanying him drowned under mysterious circumstances. <laughs> but the search continuing. We will keep breaking into your programming. The search for Bernie Guest's squirrel. <laughs> squirrel Jr. On this NBC nightly news. Still broadcasting from Yellowstone National Park, of course. <laughs> right. Looking for the picnic basket scandal <laughs> that has plagued Yogi Bear, as Ranger Smith is always trying to turn him or blame him for picnic basket. <laughs> Tom Brokaw, NBC Nightly News. <laughs> this just in, the body of Bernie Guess's squirrel has been found. It's a tragic day. We'll be going to the squirrel compound, getting a reaction from the squirrel family. <laughs> Tom Brokaw, NBC Nightly News. We'll be tying up traffic and interrupting your favorite programs to bring you continuous coverage of a lost and now dead rodent. <laughs> 
Hello, Lamb Chop. I'm free. I'm free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. I'm free at last. I thought you liked Sherry Lewis. Ding dong, the witch is dead. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Thank God. Why do you sound so bitter? She gave you your, your break in showbiz. You'd be bitter, too, if you had a hand up your ass for 20 years. <laughs> she wouldn't even take me off when she went to the bathroom, if you catch my drift. Ah, come on. No, and then she thought it was cute calling me f***ing lamb chop. That's like calling a cow meatloaf, sadistic <laughs> bitch. I was the whole act, and she knew it. We hated each other. She sucked. Oh, she's real creative. I don't listen to that shit for 20 years. Creative? I'm a fucking sock. Good thing she didn't have a condom in her hand when she thought me up. Things would look a little different. Hey, her fucking lips moved when she talked. What kind of crap is that? It's supposed to be a ventriloquist, and your mouth is moving like Monica Lewinsky's. I'm a 45 cent sock from Woolworths that she made a fucking fortune off of, and I didn't get dick. I'm going to be in a couple of new films. Yeah. That lamb chop sucks a big d- and shove your fist in my ass. And my career's flying, that fucking bitch. All right, lamb chop. I better let you go more and some more. All right. Bye-bye, kids. Bye. All right. It's lamb chop, everyone. Uh, yeah, I was just listening to your station a little while ago. Yeah. And I uh, had my three-year-old son with me, and uh, you, know, you guys were putting down Santa, the Santa Claus thing, and, oh, it's just your parents and all that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was, I, I like, I love Opie and Anthony, you know, and I am a faithful listener, but uh, I had to change the, the station. Oh, that's okay. You're, you know, you're doing parenting, that's called, when you change the stage. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait. I, mean, I, I detect that you're a little pissed at us because we just said that there's no Santa Claus on the air. Well, it would be one thing if it was, you know, a little later at night and there wouldn't happen to have been someone's kid listening, you know? Dude, I just saved you uh, the, uh, the hassle. Now you could get the credit for all those presents you bought for him. <laughs> Did we traumatize him? No, he didn't, actually. He, I changed the station in time where he didn't pick up on it because he was busy doing something else. Hey, what's your uh, son's name? It's Jeffrey. Can I uh, talk to him real fast? Uh, why? What are you going to say? I just wanted to say hi to him. You're not going to say anything bad, are you? Oh, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, are you sure? Yeah. yeah I hope not. All right, where's Jeffrey? I'll, I'll get him. He don't, he don't really talk much on the phone, but... What's your wife saying in the background? Oh, she wasn't too happy about it when I told her. She wasn't listening, but... Oh, wait, that- wait, wait. Oh, wait. Right, chill out. The one the oh, chill I out. Don't- Okay, hey, Jeffrey, somebody wants to talk to you on the phone. Those guys we're listening to on the radio. I'm on the floor first. He's, he's, he's going to measuring tape. He said he's measuring the floor first. And your wife is mad at me for, for doing that? Oh, I, bet, I better talk to him and then smooth it over. Okay, well, here, here he is, okay? I'll give him the phone, but I don't know if he'll talk. All right. Okay, here he is. Oh, here, Jeffrey, listen. Listen to this guy on the radio. He wants to talk to you. Here. Jeffrey, take it. Jeffrey, there's no Santa Claus. Jeffrey, there's no Santa Claus. It's your dad. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Heartless. Well, oh, you know, here he comes. Oh, no. We've been patiently waiting for the pork man to make his entrance into the studio here. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, pork man. Merry Christmas to you, ah. Hope you get stocking full of pork. <laughs> <laughs> and, and who are these guys with you? Are they your little cute band? Or yes, <laughs> they play the music. <clears throat> oh, very good, boys. Very good. <laughs> Yo, she, the pork man. I deliver on my bike. <laughs> With a big steel chain and some pork romaine, I bring food I hope you like. <laughs> Yo, she, the pork man, I pedo down the street. As I quick repass, you can bet your ass that pork's my favorite meat. <laughs> if, if you eat with chopsticks or use a knife and fork, I don't care if you use your hands just as wrong as you eat pork!
Yo, she, the poor man. I recommend you by your door. Tell me what you like. I hop on my bike and I bring you plenty more. Yo, she, the poor man. I will bring you Chow Fang Mok <laughs> with some Ling Gang Fang and some Chang Tang Bang if I don't get hit by truck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, boys. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's the Yoshi Portman song. I wrote that while I was delivering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a cute little song you got there, Pork Man. Oh, thank you. So Stephen Lynch is here, and you got a song for Julie, the yeah. the uh, <coughs> transvestite pre-sex op mess. Mess. Yeah, I dated somebody like that one. <laughs> okay. And hermaphrodite is the technical lingo. Hermaphrodite. Well, I had a personal experience with one. So. You did. Yeah, I wrote a little song. About it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's part girl, she's part boy She's got parts everyone can enjoy She's got more, she's got less She's got her manhood tucked in her dress, yeah Is she a mister or is she a miss? Does she stand up when she's taking a piss? She's my little girl, she's my little guy When I try to please her I get poked in the eye lace and she wears flannel she watches football and the lifetime channel what's that bulge under her nighty it's just my hermaphrodite yeah hermaphrodite oh. some things are white some things are black some girls wear makeup Mine shaves her back but She is still beautiful She is still fine It's too bad her package is bigger than mine Yeah She looks like Cher But she's built like Sonny She loves Brad Pitt And finds the Three Stooges funny Who's that girl with the grip so mighty? It's just my hermaphrodite Yeah Hermaphrodite 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 Be kidding me. Great. Stephen Lynch, everyone. You know, you don't write that without the experience. <laughs> Topi and Anthony and Spaz and Dottie. 5'2, 243 pounds. Um, Spaz will be changing Dottie's tampon. I want people to remember Spaz is blindfolded at this point because. We wanted the reaction when he takes the blindfold off and, and, right. and gets to see Dottie completely naked on the toilet, uh, spread eagle. Okay, Rick is in the yeah. bathroom, Rick. We are here in our 4x4 co-ed bathroom. Okay. All right, now now make your way in front here. All right. Kneel him down. I want to count down. Don't worry. Jesus Christ. She got it. Look, she's trying to comfort right, him. She, He's a little nervous. All right, right now she's uh, she's positioning him right in front. Come on, keep Right going. in front, very close. Come positioning to me, him come right in front. Oh, oh. That's it. Got his hand on her thigh. Okay. okay. All right, Spaz, don't move yet. On our count, Rick, okay? On our count, we are going to lift off your blindfold. All right, you ready? One, two, three. Pull it off. Hey. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> Get off the toilet! I can't handle it. Put the blindfold on! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Don't puke, dude! If you get sick, I'm gonna kick your ass. I'm sorry! Mike Brady designed mm -hmm. the Brady House. Right. And he didn't design any backs 
on the stairs uh-huh. leading up to the kids' room. And there was a, a place where, where there was bushes under the stairs for someone to hide. Mm-hmm. So you thought Mr. Brady was under the stairs checking out his, well, they didn't have his daughters and his sons. I knew he was. He designed the house. <laughs> Marsha! <laughs> Marsha, Davy Jones is here for you. I'll Marcia. Ah! Oh, yeah. Come on down those <laughs> stairs. You hot bitch. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> Mike! What? Mike! <laughs> what do you want? Can you call Cindy down? Cindy? I need Cindy. Tiger ate the mail again. Oh, Cindy. Cindy, come down, but could you wear the that little Shirley Temple outfit you wore with the dress? Don't be scared. I'll be uh, right under the stairs. I'm just under the stairs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, lisp for me. You're the dirtiest Brady of them all. Thief, 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 bite a thief. You're a dirty girl, aren't you? Thief, thief, thief. Mike! Mike! What? You faghead! What? Why are my panties stretched out, Mike? <laughs> uh, why are you asking me? Alice's fat ass is probably in him. That's probably it, Mike. Oh, well, I need Jan. Jan has to come down. My God, I have to reprimand her for not wearing her glasses. She could have killed herself. <laughs> oh, yeah, strut down those stairs. You little Brady. Yeah, you're a filthy Brady girl. Oh, stop on the stairs. Stop right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah, Dad, but... can I turn your office into a room for me? Greg? Yeah, Dad? Now, Greg, we're going to have to talk about this because an office has a lot of responsibility. I want you to come down here and we'll, I'll meet you in the office. Okay. Come on. Oh, <laughs> look at that Johnny Bravo ass in those pants. Dad, can I call you Mike? Yeah, call me whatever you want. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take you to the to the Grand Canyon. Really, Dad? Yeah. But I want to sing. Oh, sing into the microphone, son. All right. That's not a microphone. Oh. <laughs> it's winking at me. <laughs> Dad, you're Jewish. Bobby! <laughs> Bobby! Yeah, Dad! Come, come on down here. We're going to play on the trampoline. I wish I was taller. Yeah. I'm going to hang on the monkey boys to get taller. You jump up and down on that trampoline. I'm looking right up your, your shorts leg. <laughs> yeah. Boy, that looks like a, a plucked chicken, doesn't it? Yeah, not a hair on there. Wow. <laughs> You forgot Peter. Peter! <laughs> Peter! Dad, Peter! We, we're all out of pork chops and applesauce. Oh, that's okay, Peter. Come on down. All right. Come on down and I'll feed you sausage. That's what you want, sausage. Oh, walk down those stairs. Look at you. Oh, you get an afro just like Dad's. I bet you have one of those Brady afros in your pants, too, don't you? Yeah. It's time to change, isn't it? Dad, Dad, Jan's yelling at me because he's using my hairbrush. Shut up and get on the bunk bed. Ah. Oh, here comes Greg again. Those are groovy glasses, Greg. You know, you were caught smoking, but no one has to know. I won't tell Mom if you just help out old Dad. It wasn't my jacket, Dad. It wasn't my jacket. I don't care. Why are you putting the jacket over my head? Now we're going to smoke a cigar. <laughs> Come here, Greg. This is a fine cigar. I call this the Pink Tip White Owl. You're going to like the draw on this one. Mm. Hi, Mr. Brady. Is Alice home? Hey, Sam. To come over here and show me some meat. Ah. All right, as long as Alice isn't home. Okay, very good. That was... <laughs> Can we leave on an up note? I doubt it. Make which one is your national office, please hold. When you help me, a wish comes true. Sorry about that. Hold. How can I help you? Hi. This is John Huber. I was told to call back after the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, make wishes happen for sick kids. Right. How can we help you? Well, son Jonathan is dying. Okay, one moment. Yeah, do you do things with um, celebrities? Yes. Where they 
they can meet the celebrities and stuff? Mm-hmm. We well, sure do. Let me give you a phone number. Yeah, he, he wants to meet um, Pamela Lee from Baywatch. Okay. Um, well, let me give you the phone number to the chapter that would help him. You think that's a possibility? Um, it depends on, you know, there's a lot of things that it would depend on. But first of all, let's get you going on his local chapter. They're the ones that would be working with him. All right. Well, it, it's just a simple request. Um, oh, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, John, Jonathan just wants to, to see um, uh, Pam. Right. Okay. Let me give you this phone number to call. Let's see Pam uh, giving me oral favors before he dies. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> okay, um, let me give you this phone number. You think that would be possible? It might be, but you need to get it going, so let's give you this phone number and give them a call. So you th honestly think that he he could see Pamela giving me a blowjob? What? That's right. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bob, are you ready to play uh, Hi, Mom, I'm Gay? Absolutely. Now, I hear you're 35 years old. Yeah. Never been married. Ever. Are you gay? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no rope swallowing. <laughs> All right, Bob, let's give it a shot. All right. Hello? Mom, can you hear me, darling? Yeah. It's Bobby. Bobby? Yeah. Where are you? I'm at work. Yeah, well, you sound awful funny. Yeah, I know. All right. Hey, uh, Mom, you sitting down? Why? Uh, I got to tell you something. What? Uh, don't get nervous. Something I've been meaning to tell you. I was going to call. tell you when you called earlier today. Yeah? Uh, I'm gay. Oh, you're full of s***. I'm a Twinkie. I, I swear it. Bobby, will you stop it? You know, I have <laughs> enough aggravation. What? How come you, don't, you never believe me? Because I don't believe you. Why? Well, you just had a child, Bobby. <laughs> yeah. That was to throw you off. Yeah, okay. You know, I, I wanted to tell you that. I was hoping you wouldn't take it lightly, but... Bobby. What? Are you trying to be funny? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I had to tell you, you know, I just don't feel right. I've known it ever since I was a kid. Bobby, are you with Donna? Not at the moment. Not at the moment. All right. With okay. Lenny. I, I, you can tell your father that. I'm not even going to bring it up. All right. right. I, I, you're the one that's always said some terrible things about those people. So what's what's the... You know, what's all of a sudden? Well, it was to throw everyone off, you know? Bobby, I don't believe it. However, you know... You still I, love I me? I had enough heartache. I, I think, you know... Good you God, still love I, me? Of course I love you. You just won't kiss me on the lips anymore, huh? What the hell are you doing, drinking? No. <laughs> no. Yeah, all right, all right. Okay, I'm working. Your father's out to lunch. Have you told Gene this? Uh, no, I was going to spring it on him tonight. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, you do that. Stand, stand a long distance away, will you? I will, out of arm's reach. Bobby, don't give me that baloney, please. You break my hat when you do things like this. I'll talk to you later when I when I can sit down with you. Yeah, that'd be nice. All right. All right. I love you. See you later. I love you, too. Okay. <laughs> Holy Jesus. Dude. I, I got to get back to her quick, man. Yeah, She's going to put a knife that. in her wrist. You better do that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Ed Klee, owner of Klee Motors, home of the Klee Jeep, Klee Valvo, and the Klee Taurus. Let's see what some of our satisfied women owners have to say about their Klee Taurus. I just love my Klee Taurus. Hey, who wouldn't? When I need to get away, I lean back and get lost in my Klee Taurus. Many women say that a Klee Taurus is easy to maintain. Here to tell you about the easy maintenance of a Klee Taurus is crack mechanic Michael Hunt. Because your Klee Taurus is so sensitive, we recommend that you have it looked at in service at least once every three months. If not lubed up regularly, your parts are going to get gummed up and they won't work. And hey, that stinks. Thanks, Mike. The guys at Klee Motors are always eager to not only service my Klee Taurus, but it's the fact that they take the time to polish it and buff it to a spit shine that keeps me coming back. Thanks, Ed. That's what I'm here for. It was our anniversary, and my husband wanted to get me an unforgettable surprise. I searched and searched, and admittedly, I had a little trouble finding it. Imagine my excitement when you finally came across my Clee Taurus. Thanks, Ed. Don't thank me. Thank my staff for looks and feel 
You can't lick a clitoris. I don't drive my clitoris. It drives me wild. <laughs> a clitoris is hard to find, but it is worth the effort. Let me, Ed Klee, help you find your clitoris. Today, at Klee Motors, off of Route 69, you'll find us right next to Cox Liquors. Yeah, if you read the paper today, Popeye's getting married. I'm getting married. <laughs> Ooh, maybe now I'll get some pusky. <laughs> Popeye, I don't think you could say pusky Ooh, on the radio. Put my mighty hands around her skinny little butts, <laughs> and then I gaze into her pusky. <laughs> you can't say <laughs> pusky on the radio. Ooh, I could say whatever I want. I'm Popeye. <laughs> Pusky, pusky, pusky. <laughs> she spent all that time with Brutusk. Yeah. I thought it was going to stretch out her pusky. <laughs> <laughs> what about Wimpy? Uh, wimps, wimpsky? Yeah. He's a homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> Always in a search for meat. <laughs> I'll gladly pay you today for a hamburger tomorrow. <laughs> or whatever the hell's get used to say. <laughs> wow, Wimpy's a, a, a homosexual, huh? Wimpy's a homosexual. <laughs> and Olive Oil has a nice... Uh... Olive's Goyle was a whore <laughs> until she marsgied me. I say. And now it's just me and Olive's Pusky. <laughs> 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 Looks like you're excited because you're going to finally be able to bed down olive oil. Ooh, yeah, we're going to go on a Hunsky moon. <laughs> yeah? Ooh, she's a little flats chest kid. <laughs> yeah, just a little. <laughs> a little skull shy in the titsky section. <laughs> Ooh, not too big on the titskies. <laughs> you can't say. But she makes up for it with the pusky. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, and that narrow little ask. Yeah. Ooh, she's got quite the lips glask on her. <laughs> but I'm dreaming of the pusky. <laughs> oh, well, blow me. Down. <laughs> hey, Popeye, I was always wondering this question. Yes? Does your unit get really big when you eat the spinach like your biceps? <laughs> of course. And I got a big tattoo of an anchor on it. <laughs> oh. Ooh. And it disappears sometimes. <laughs> Whenever it ventures towards Kapuski. Hey, all right, come on. <laughs> she takes her little pantskies off. <laughs> and it looks like spinach. <laughs> <laughs> it used to get violated by Brutusk. <laughs> I would get Slopsky seconds. <laughs> That's the songs I sing when I seize the pusky. Yes, Are you gonna do a can of spinach before your wedding night? <laughs> That's like Pop Sky's Viagra. I just take me spinach. It swells up me member. <laughs> I'd launch cut through the seals in. Yeah, you would. Oh, I should take Scott to the doctor, though. Why? So he can put skin a stitch or two. <laughs> Brutus was pretty big. I could pass a can of spinach through there. <laughs> oh. The first time Sky saw the pusky, yeah. I thought it was the sea hag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks like it was covered with seaweed. Uh, yeah. Wow, really? Uh, me being a sailor me whole life, yeah. I knows what low tide smells like. Why, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, like I've introduced her to the douche. <laughs> Sometimes you gots to douche the pusky. <laughs> I ain't no big wusky, and I'll say pusky. I'm Pops Guy the Sailor Man. <laughs> Hi, are you selling the Sing and Snore Ernie? Yes, I am. How much you want for it? Um, three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars? Mm-hmm. If if you want more than one, we come down to two fifty. Well, uh, I don't have $300, and it's for my, my kid. Yeah. Um, she's five, and 
and and she's got leukemia and, and she wants the uh Sing and snore Ernie, and I don't know what to do. Went to about three or four stores, and they're all sold out, and I really got to come through because this could be her last Christmas. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what is your name, sir? Uh, John. And your last name? Huber. Okay, uh, you and your telephone number? Oh, this sounds a little fishy. This isn't fishy. You sound fishy. I'm not fishy. My my kid is dying, and I need to uh, take care of this for her. No, I understand, I sir. called the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and they didn't even have any left. It's the, the, the doll is so hot. Well, you said 250 I would come down to 250 for you, yeah. For one? Yes. For a sick child, 250 Um, I got to maybe um, $100. Okay. Well, I'm a little nervous. Yeah, no, that's okay. If you give me your telephone number, you know, my husband will give you a call. What about $150? Hon, listen, we'll come down, but I just, I, my husband's handling this. <sighs> you sure you'll come down a little for the sick kid? We can try. We can try, sir. Give me your telephone number. How much did it cost you? That's none of your business, sir. Well, I was just wondering. They were twenty nine ninety five, and I, I was stupid, and now I need to get one of these. Okay, well, if you give me your telephone number, we'll get back with you tomorrow afternoon. I, I need it now. I don't, I don't really trust that. Sir, I live in Pennsylvania. Well, you could ship it. Yes, I could ship it, but we need the money first. I, I could get you the money. It's for my sick kid. Yeah, well, if you give me your telephone number, my husband is handling this, sir. He will talk to you. You don't want to take advantage of a sick child, do you? No, I'm not. All right. What if, um, maybe $100? Sir, I'm not to commit to anything. My husband is handling this. I'm desperate. I'll give you $100 in sexual favors, whatever it takes. You know, you're just lucky. You just called the state the police department. This is being traced. No, it's not. <laughs> it's the police department and we're selling sing and snore earnings for 300 bucks good night archie oh archie what are you doing what are you going down there for oh oh i don't know about this archie oh ow archie stick your tongue in it a little oh oh my goodness archie Oh, eat my f Archie. Oh, Archie. Mm, yes, 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 Archie. Yes. You want a beer, Archie? I'll go get you a beer. As we leave you on this Sunday morning, here's me taking a big poop. Sometimes a poop is a good thing on a Sunday morning. Something you'd like to share with your neighbors, your friends. Here's me and the sounds of dumping. <laughs> Oftentimes we don't have time to show you the poop. Today, here's me taking a dump and then me showing it to you. Oftentimes we like to leave our viewers with a little something from the outside. Today, it's me taking a poop. Here's me running to the outhouse to take a big old Harry. And as we leave you on this Sunday morning, the sounds of pooping. Because there's nothing better than a good poop. Your
Hi, right, what can I do for you? Okay, is this Mr. William? Yes. Great, <laughs> okay. Basically, we're conducting a brief satisfaction survey for <laughs> Bank. To do that, please indicate your level of satisfaction on a 1 to 7 scale, where 7's the highest and 1's the lowest rating. Did you visit a teller on your most recent visit? Uh, yes, I did. I'd like you to rate your teller visit at the branch on three characteristics using a number from 1 to 7. Let's start with the giving a personal touch to your transaction. Uh, that would be a 7. That was the problem. There was too much touching going on. Ah, I see. Okay, how about the length of time you waited? I didn't wait at all. I guess he liked me. Okay, uh, 7 would be your highest level of satisfaction and 1 would be your least. Uh, well, the service was prompt, but I didn't uh, appreciate um, him hitting on me in the bank vault. Ah, I see. I think so I got a sexual harassment suit pending myself. Just so you know, there are comments later if you choose to add things. Oh, I got plenty of comments. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, he led me right into the, the, the big bank vault. Okay. How about your overall satisfaction with the teller service? I didn't think he was going to try to make a deposit on me. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that, sir. You've just taken... You're still reading from your script, and I'm trying to tell you that a guy at that branch was hitting on me in the bank vault. I assume you want to add comments, those comments in later when I get to the comment section then? You, you don't find this shocking that he bent me over in the bank vault? Well, I do, but unfortunately I'm not allowed... I'm not supposed to offer any input one way or another. This thingy looked like a roll of quarters. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry this happened, sir. <sighs> At any rate, how would you like to rate your overall satisfaction with the teller service? He was good, but I just don't go that way. Okay. Um, the withdrawal process was a bitch. Was a real problem, huh? Did you talk to a You try pulling a uh, roll of quarters out of your butt and see what you would think. Did you talk to a manager about it? Of course not. I was horrified. Okay. Did you visit a sales or service representative or branch manager at that He branch? said he would hurt my family if I, if I told anyone. Uh-huh. Um, he said it was going to be our little secret. Pardon yeah, me? little secret. Now I got a big secret in the back of my pants. Uh-huh. Okay, sir. Okay, did you visit a sales or service representative or branch Eight freaking manager? inches. Pardon me? <sighs> Go ahead. Did you use an ATM at that branch in the last 30 to 45 days? Yeah, I had to pay him. Okay, rate your overall satisfaction with the ATM service on a scale from... Oh, it was just dandy. Just dandy? Yes. Okay. You figure out the scale on just dandy. That I can't do. Um, I need an input from you. I think I've heard enough about inputs. Okay, do you want to rate it on the 1 to 7 scale? It was about 8 inches. I told you that earlier. All things considered, thinking about your most recent visit to the branch, rate your overall satisfaction with the service received at the branch using a number from 1 to 7. Lady, it was a 1! He f***ed me in the b***! Okay, there are many service issues beyond your last branch visit that affect your overall satisfaction. Are you listening to me? Do you understand what he did? I understand what you're telling me, sir. Have you ever been anally penetrating when you, when you weren't expecting it? Point... Frankly, I don't think you are using the proper venue to express your frustration. Or what do you want me to do? You called about service. I'm telling you what happened. Then for my butt wasn't comments, a proper venue. Who are you kidding? If you have comments later, I'll be more than happy. I to need to them. comment now. Okay. I bent over, grabbed my ankles. He took this thing that looked like a roll of quarters and he shoved it up my. Is this Opie or Anthony? Uh, both. I was just very upset by the use of the word pussy. You know, oh! The, you just used the word! Used the you word. just insulted me! You used the word as a pejorative. What's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with pussy. I haven't heard the word per pejorative. <laughs> pejorative. Per what a, pejorative uh, since I, I was in high that, school. Do you know what it means? No, do I need to know what that word means? Uh, we're using it out of context. I know I need to know what the word pussy means. You probably do. <laughs> He makes people happy. It shouldn't be used in a derisive way. It, it insinuates that you think pussy is small and weak. Oh my God! But you're... my my pussy is is big and strong. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm sure. I'm a big pussy woman. One zero two seven W N E W. My pussy is so The Rock of New York ass. Radio Head Karma my Police. My pussy is gonna come this over there. This lady's and yelling at us ass. in the background. That's how big All it right, is. All right, shut up. We'll get to you next. It's not <laughs> wimpy. It's big, man. <laughs> it's coming down the street right now, and it's gonna kick your ass. Wow. <laughs> It's penis white lifting.
<laughs> this is Andrew from New Jersey. Yeah, now he's he's, right. he's lifting. Oh! oh! He's swinging it! He's swinging it! He's swinging it! Oh! He's swinging it! Oh! He's swinging it! Oh! He's swinging the ball. Oh my God! Very impressed by his lifting prowess. He has uh, taken the anvil that weighs 40 pounds. He's uh, working feverishly to get that, get that fastened on. On three, here's Andrew for kicks and giggles. 40 pounds, he's lifting it. Come on, Come he, on. he's having trouble. It's, he's up. 40 pounds. He's swinging it. He's swinging 40 pounds. Oh my God. People oh here uh, giving Andrew a standing, standing ovation. ovation. Wash your hands. Hello? Oh, damn, I think I lost. Hi, is this Scooby-Doo? Yes. How are you this afternoon? All right. Hey, Mr. Do, um, me and my partner, Obi, we have this stupid little contest. Yes. Where we uh, bet a beer. Yes. Then we call up people and um, see if they're alive or dead. And, and you're obviously alive, so Opie won the beer because yeah! I, I thought you were dead. Yeah. <clears throat> Scooby Dooby Doo. And <laughs> <laughs> Scooby. Oh my God. Hey, we're talking to Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah. How about uh, some Scooby Snacks? <laughs> <laughs> hey, didn't you do the uh, voice for Droopy Dog too? Yes, I'm Droopy. I'm so happy. <laughs> that is very good. How about Astro? Uh, Astro. Uh, Reverse words. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and, and one of my favorites, uh, Ricochet Rabbit. Ricochet Rabbit. Uh, bing, bing, bing. <laughs> <laughs> and Boo Boo. Uh-huh. Hi. Uh, my, my, my pal y Yogi isn't here. Uh, but he's probably, <laughs> probably, uh, uh, I, he better n not be, uh, picking up any, uh, picnic, picnic baskets. baskets. Picnic baskets, <laughs> as he calls them. Oh, oh boy. boy. Hey, uh, Boo Boo Bear, it sounds like you've been hitting the bottle. <laughs> Ranger, Ranger Smith. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Ranger yeah. Smith. And all these voices live inside your head? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, uh, Papa Smurf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hey, did you do any voices on the Flintstones? Bam, bam, bam. Oh, well. Well, that's fantastic. You still do them really good. Mm-hmm. Even after all those years, that's great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hi. You, you mean me? Hmm? Yeah, you. Oh, my God. Well, Mr. Scooby-Doo, you won me a beer. You're obviously alive. Barely. <laughs> Shut up, dude. Jeez. So Anthony owes me a beer. Oh, I think I owe you half a beer. <laughs> uh, little more of Scooby? Hello? Uh, Scooby, Scooby, Dooby, Doo. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scooby, thanks for spending a few minutes with us this afternoon. What? Excuse me? Thanks for spending a few minutes with us this afternoon. What am I doing this afternoon? No, thanks for spending a few minutes with us this afternoon. Oh. oh. All righty. All right. Have a great day. Okay. All right. Bye. Okay. Hello, miss. I'm an elderly woman. I just moved here from Boston, Massachusetts, and uh, I have a leaky bathtub. Uh-huh. I believe I need cork to fill in the hole. You need, pardon me? I need cork. Okay, please hold. Thank you for holding. We will be with you shortly. Oh. Yes, I'm in desperate need of cork. The old cork just ain't working anymore. Okay. Over in the paint department, they have GE silicone they got for that. Is that good cork? Sure is. And, and that works good in the bathtub? Sure does. Could I speak to someone in the paint department? Sure, hold on one second. Hello, miss. I need cork. You need cork? No, I need cork. If I needed cork, I would have said cork. Clark. Does he supply the cork? Can you spell this for me? C-A-U-L-K, cork. Please hold. Hello? Paint department. 
Hi, I need cock. Huh? I need cock. Clark? Cock. Yeah? I need cock. Because I own a house now, and all the, the cock in my house is all dried up. Okay. I need uh, some brand new cock. You carry cock? You need cock? Yes, I need cock for my bathtub. Um, what kind? Just uh, what kind of color are you looking for? I don't really care. I like white cock, but uh, I'll take any color. The cock that's in my house is all dried and cracked, and oh, it's, it? it's leaky cock. I need new cock. <laughs> All right, well, we got all sorts of shapes and varieties here of cock for you, you know. All kinds of shapes of cock? Oh, yeah, we even have one that's about two feet long. Really, darling? Down a tube, yeah. Well, that's a lot of cock. Yeah. I probably could use that much. What yeah, the... a lot of people could. Thank you, sir. You've been very kind. Also, we have some uh, some special guns to attach to the cock, you know, get a little more width there. Cock gun? Yep. Oh, that sounds very exciting. I'll have to come down. All right, we got plenty for you. Thank you very much. And if you much. don't see anything on the shelf you like, some of our employees have their own that they can give to you. Their own special brand of cock? Oh, yeah. That's wonderful, darling. Uh, we do everything for you here. Thank you very much, son. We'll even uh, send someone over to your house sometimes to help you use it. To help me p install the cock? Yep, they'll install it for you real nice. Somebody could help me put the cock in, really? That's right. That's wonderful. All right, so you have a good day, ma'am. Thank you, son. Bye. Alzheimer's Association, can I help you? Hello? I had this number in my wallet. I, I don't know where I am. You don't know where you are? I had this number in my wallet. You're lost? I don't know. I'm you... at a phone booth. Give me the phone number. It's not on here. It's... It's not, there's no phone number on the phone? Let me look. What phone? You're calling from a phone. Is there a phone number there? Yes, there is. Could I have the phone number? I believe it's an eight. Hold on the phone. Can you hold on? Don't hang up. Hello? Yes, can you hear me? Who's this? This is Estelle. Can you he hear me? Hello? Don't hang the phone up. Hang up? No, do not hang up. Hold on, please. Don't hang up. I'm going to put you on the phone with someone else. Hold on. Hang up what? No. It's cold. You're cold? I'm colder, yes. I know. Cold like Brazil. I'm Where, wet. Do you know? I believe I need a change. Stay on the phone. I'm, I'm wet. You're all wet? Yeah, I'm wet. Okay. Well, you just stay on the phone. I need a changing, and my nurse isn't here. And, and do you know I'm going to walk across. Where you are? Can I'm, you tell me the number? Can I'm going to walk across the street now. No, stay on Don't the phone. Walk across. Who's this now? My name is Judy. What's yours? I call. My name's Bill. Bill. Hi, Bill. Hi. How are you? Hi, Sam. You sounds a little lost. Gonna walk across the street now. You know what? I'd rather you didn't uh, walk across the street because if you walk across I the think. street, I can't talk to you. Oh, hey! Hey, Bill! Hey! Oh! Hello? Hello? Yeah, are you still there? Who is this, please? This is Judy. Is this Bill? Where's Sam? Sam just went out to get some coffee. I hate coffee! Oh, Sam he... knows I hate coffee. Well, maybe he went to get you a coke, then. He said he was going out to get a drink. There's a cars now, a lot of cars. I'm going gonna, gonna to cross the street now. You know what? If there are a lot of cars, you shouldn't be crossing the street. All right, here I go. I, I know. can't talk to you I think my home the... is across the street. Here I go. Are you talking on the phone, Bill? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Call the police while we have him. Wasn't doing any good. He's still here. He's Call the police. He probably was hit by. He did not hang up. He put the phone down. He, he dropped the phone. He did not hang up. Oh my God! Someone call an ambulance! Hey, I told you. Ah, oh, this is horrible. My God, he looks awful. 
Who is this? Who am I speaking to, please? Somebody call an ambulance! Help over the here. man got hit! Alright, we're calling an ambulance. He's, Can you give me the address? He's a mess! The man got hit! Don't touch him! Leave him down there! Hello, can you give me, tell me where you are? It's too late! It's too late! There's, there's bad spirit all over the road! Can you tell me where you are? It's too late unless you got a shovel! Alright, we'll get a shovel. Where are you? It's too late! It isn't too late! You can't help anymore! Just bring a shovel! Can you tell me where you are right now? Disneyland! In Disneyland? Can you tell me where in Disneyland? Pirates of the Caribbean! And the Pirates of the Caribbean! Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me! I'm okay now! You're okay? You got all pulled yourself together again? A, a car hit me and I feel fine now! Oh, I'm so glad you That's feel fine, Bill. I... I, you had me really worried! That's all Bill needed was a little bumper! Can you tell me where you are, Bill? Jupiter! On Jupiter? Planet Jupiter! Is there a street number or a name on Planet Jupiter? 23 Jupiter. 23 Jupiter. 23. Okay, do you live there? Send a cab. Send, I would happily send a cab, but you tell send me where a to cab. send it. You tell them to make a right at Venus. Right at Venus. And it's Jupiter, 28 Jupiter. 28? That's what I said. Okay. And what are you doing there now? Masturbating. Oh, I see. Hi, sir. My name is April, and I'm calling from Century 21 Cabinet Refacing. And the purpose of my call is to tell you about a service that we're providing for homeowners in the YCL area. Mr. B, do you own your home? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'm kind of in the middle of my job right now. Okay, no problem, sir. Um, I'm a college student. I'm trying to make some extra money on the side. Oh, me too. Oh, are you? Yes. What, what do you do? I'm telemarketing, sir. Oh. <laughs> I, I, uh, <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing, but I, <laughs> I donate to a sperm bank. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll call you back. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of in the middle of it. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. A hundred dollars a whack, which is pretty nice. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. All right. All right. Uh, do we have the president, the ex-president, on the line Joe, now? No, I just want to dispel those rumors about where well, my health. Yeah, they're they're, they're saying that uh, there's a 36-hour death watch uh, on who? On you, Mr. Reagan. Is Mr. Reagan there? No, no, you're you're Mr. Reagan. I am. Yeah, you're the ex-president of the United States of uh, America. Mr. Gorbachev, <laughs> tear down that wall. No, no, no. I, hello? No, you, you left the presidency a real long time ago, uh, Mr. Reagan. Where did I leave it? I'm always <laughs> forgetting things. The bombing starts in five minutes. No, 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 no. We, we, want, <laughs> hello? we want to just discuss the fact that you're still alive and well. God bless Pakistan. <laughs> well, I'm fine. I still well, take a dump every morning like clockwork at 6 a.m. Yeah. Well, I don't get up till seven. <laughs> oh my that God. old gag. That old gag. <laughs> hey, you were spotted on the streets of uh, California in Brentwood uh, yes. uh, eating ice cream. I love ice cream now. It's much the same as, you know, running the free world, <laughs> eating ice cream. One minute you well, have your hand on the button that could destroy all mankind. Yeah. The next year. Eating Fudgy the Whale. <laughs> Can someone shoot me? Look, I'm a cat. Meow. Meow. Well, no. every morning I wake up and thank God I'm able to stare at Nancy's giant head. She's like a friggin' Pez dispenser then. Well, it's like looking at a Mardi Gras float for gun. Hello? Hello? Is that why you... 356,018, 356,019, 300... Why are you counting? I'm counting my liver spots. Four or five more, and I'm a black man. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Look, I can see through walls, and I'm a pirate. A bast, matey. Yeah. 
You know what the good thing about Alzheimer's is? Oh, uh, what? I'm with a new chick every day. <laughs> Why is it always a skinny pig with a huge head? You're well, out of your mind. It's off to Carvel for another <laughs> Fudgy the Whale. Well, obviously you're alive and, uh, yes. and well, uh, Mr. Yes. Reagan, yes. Well, God bless Iraq. All right. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> there he goes. You're calling about the job. Right. Uh, what's, uh, what's your experience in this field? I worked for a landscaper for like three years. And yeah. before that, you know, I mowed the lawn at my house and stuff. Yeah. I did the, uh, you know, the edging. The last, uh, the last job I was on, I did the edger. And uh, I did the bushes with the, uh, the clippers. You, uh, you know how to work that big uh, blower thing? To uh, I, never, I never got to use that thing, the blower. What's the biggest bush you've ever trimmed? Uh, pretty big. Was it like a 70s Earth Mama Muff or? Like a what? 70s Earth Mama Muff. It's a little lingo in the business. I'm like sorry. a hedge. Like nah, a, like I don't know hedge. the, uh, I don't know what they were called. Was it like a bush that was shaped in like, um, the, like sh a, the shape of like a Hitler mustache? Like a Hitler mustache? No. Yeah. Like a hedge, you know. No, like big though, like, uh, like round. It was like a nice landing strip? Like whenever anything custom had to do, my boss uh, did it, Manny. And you're good at blowing? Well, I told you, I never did the blowing machine. But you're willing to learn how to blow? Yeah. Oh, that's very nice. All right, good. Yeah, I'll blow. probably use that. And what's your name? Can I get your name? Yeah, yeah. John Huber. All right, John. Yeah, my name's John, too. Um, yeah, if you could possibly maybe, um, I don't know, put some of the bush clippings in an envelope and send it in, that would help us out to see what type of bush you've been trimming. In an envelope? Actually, what I would do is uh, make a, like a collage, you know, with all the bush you've trimmed over the years. If you still had that laying around. Right. And, um... Well, I don't have it laying around. I don't, I don't take the crap home. Well... Well, you know, we, we have higher-ups, too, and they just want to see some kind of, uh, you know, foliage. So if I get cardboard... Yeah, get some yeah. cardboard. And glue, like, the different things on it and just put it in one of them big envelopes so I can mail it in and you can check it out? Yeah, and just, like, label, you know, which All is which. All the different bushes that I've uh, done? Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. All right, mail it in there. Should I put my name and any other experience? Yeah, like, uh, yeah, put your name and, and a phone number we can reach you. So we'll we'll take a look at your work, and then we'll call you yeah. back. It's going right. to be a pretty big piece of cardboard, though. We're looking at, uh, you know, three feet by about three feet. All right. I don't know what that's going to run to mail, but... All right, John? Three foot. Yeah, three yeah. foot by three foot. Like a big, like one of the things from school, like construction paper, like the yeah. old pegs? Yeah. yeah. Can I fold it? Ooh, um, no, oof. that affects the... Uh, the foliage. All right. Actually. Yeah. Just find a big envelope. All right. If you want, you can bring it down personally. Just uh, go to the address on the uh, ad there. Okay. All right. All right. Your name's John? Yeah. Just look for me. All right, John. All right, man. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. All right. Bye. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I couldn't hold it in. Come on. <laughs> if that was real, we just talked to the stupidest man alive. Anthony! Oh. So you're on the roof, huh? Yeah. What are you, like 60 feet off the ground, I'd have to say? Yeah, it's like six stories, maybe even a little more. Nice! Yeah. I think we're going to set this world record, bro. I think we are, because it's a nice warm day, and I hear that things have more lift when there's uh, the, the air is more dense like this. All right, well, our chicken only has to last about 13 seconds. 13 seconds. Okay. Brian's bringing over the chicken. Yeah, we got to thank Brian for getting us that chicken. Wait a minute. Oh, here he is. That is a big, ugly chicken. It sounds very healthy, like it might be able to fly 13 seconds. It does. It's got a big wingspan, too. All right. All right. It's fat, though. That might not be good. Uh-oh. It's like been raised to, I think, lay eggs. All right. Well, I guess we're ready on this end whenever uh, you're ready, dude. Okay. Let me... I don't want to touch him. Wait a minute. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's trying to nip me. <laughs> He's trying to... Hold his wings down. Wait. They're flapping around. Wait a minute. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm going to the edge of the roof with him. All right, cool. Um, should I just heave him? Go. Oh, should I just heave him off? I say just kick him off, man. All right, here he goes. All right. Oh, there he goes. He's uh -oh. off. He's going. All right, 13 oh. seconds. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. Stop the watch. Stop the stopwatch. Stop the watch, dude. Uh, what happened? Oh, my God. He did a header. <laughs> he did a header. The thing didn't even fly. It went straight <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is horrible. What? Dude, it, it's flopping all over. Someone, <laughs> dude, dude, step on his head or something. He can't, 
it's flopping around like, oh, this is disgusting. Well, how many seconds do you think it lasted? I knew it was a flightless bird, but you think it could fly a little? Dude, it was no more than four seconds. <laughs> oh, man. It went straight down. <laughs> Like tumbling. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Right. Oh, dude. <laughs> well, well, there is some good news that came out of this. We, we do have dinner, so. I feel bad. All right, well, there you go. There's our world record attempt at uh, <laughs> trying to make a chicken fly for 13 seconds. Four seconds. Four damn seconds. All right, brother man. I'll be right in. Yoshi Sun Kitchen, what you order? No, Yoshi, it's Opie and Anthony from NEW. You press order now. I, I, it's a Yoshi Sun Kitchen. No, I'm not calling for an order. I, you, I, I, uh, you want a Chung Fang? Uh, tang, what? No, I. I what, a tang, kung tang, tang. <sighs> what do you want? If I order, will you talk to us about this Chinese Viagra? Of course, I talk to you. You order. All right, just give me, I don't know, four or five. <laughs> Um, sweet and sour is cool. <laughs> and, and what's the house specialty today? House special, uh, ting tang pork and fang tang sauce. <laughs> okay, are you going to deliver it yourself on your bike? Of course. <laughs> okay. I'm going right over there. Okay. Well, could you tell us a little bit more about this Chinese Viagra? Oh, weege. We call it weege. Weege? Yes, uh, Yoshi take it. You take the Chinese uh, Viagra, huh? Yes, I was having a little problem with my plick. With your what? I was having problem with my plick. What's a plick? Well, that's where I have my problem. Oh, so oh. I take a, a Chinese Viagra. <laughs> okay, I see. And right. it makes your plick rot. <laughs> it makes your what? It makes your plick rot. Plick, okay. <laughs> yes, if you have broken plick, <laughs> it's a pear. <laughs> for your plick. <laughs> yes, in, you know, in a laboratory, uh -huh. it turned men from a rimp romaine noodle yeah. to big dick egg roll. <laughs> I say. In no time. Well, uh, All of a sudden, Yoshi looked like he had a baby panda in his pants. <laughs> yes, it looked like he had a ring and chang in pants. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, it, it's, a, it's a natural herb, right? Yes, a very natural. From... Ancient Chinese secret. Oh, I see. Yes, it well, contains a ginseng, mm, chang fang, mm. chow luck, fang rang, wing chang, and special secret ingredients. <laughs> What's the special secret oh, ingredient? Oh, I cannot divulge special secret <laughs> ingredient. Come on, Yoshi, let us know Very what the special secret, secret ingredient. ingredient is. Very secret. <laughs> what okay, is... you listen, I tell you. Okay. <laughs> what? Po. What? Po. Po? Pork! <laughs> Pork, okay! Now everyone know! Pork, good for plick! <laughs> what do you do with your plick? You pork with it! <laughs> so of course you use pork for your plick! All right, so there's pork in the uh, in the Chinese Viagra. Yes. Okay. Tang, 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 I have to go now. I have to deliver. Right. Your order is ready. Well, come on by with the order later okay, on. Okay, right? I'll be about 10 minutes. And take care of your plick. Okay. All right. Hey! All right, see you later. Pull. All right, there he goes, everyone. Yoshi, the pork man. Hello, Yoshi's on kitchen. What do you order? Champagne? One chai? About a 10 minutes. There's a man who peddles into danger. If you eat Chinese food, this guy's no stranger He's weaving down the block uh, What you want to be for pork? The man will risk his life to bring you egg rolls Little Asian man Little Asian man He may just get run over While bringing you lo mein Bikes a piece of crap, his basket's rusted. That's from one time so. The seat is wrapped in tape, the brakes are busted. He used his shoes to stop. That's when he hit that cop. Who still finds bits of rice inside his holster. Little Asian man, little he may just get run over 
while bringing you low main. Monster douche. <laughs> That's right, ladies. Massengill premix pre-measure disposable douche. <laughs> Shoot that oil, water, and vinegar 50 feet. <laughs> yes, Playtex tampons for that fresh feeling when you're feeling like down and dirty in the bar. <laughs> Put it in the mud. Be cleaning up that yeast. <laughs> Monistat 7. Yes, and the one that started it all, Monistat 1. It's Monistat 1 through 7 for those nasty yeast infections. And that certain area is looking like a mud bomb. Let's go racing. Yeah. Racing a swamp buggy down and dirty in the hair patch. <laughs> John Glenn will be the oldest man in space, but who knows? Maybe in a few months, they'll send Bob Hope up into space. Hey, I got to tell you, this is Bob. Where the hell's the Grim Reaper Hope? It's great to be here on the space shuttle. Hey, that payload section's big enough for Charo's ass, isn't it? <laughs> ah, how about that Brooke Shields? <laughs> hey, my eyes are bleeding. Hey, is that a sunset or blood on my corneas? <laughs> I, I can't tell. But I got to tell you, hey, how about that zero gravity, huh? Hey, my ball sack's bouncing around like a hippity hop. It's like I got a pound of melted Turkish taffy in my underwear. Hey, John Glenn, pass the Viagra. I got to take a leak. <laughs> ah, can't even leak without Viagra. My prostate looks like the surface of the moon. Ouch. Hey, where's Susan Anton? Hey, me and Bing are making a new film, On the Road to the Cemetery. Ah. Hey, from the space shuttle live, I want to say hi to my wife for 70 years, Dolores. I don't want to say she's dry, but boy, that'd be a tough re-entry. <laughs> ah, she couldn't get wet in a rainforest. Hey, John, is that a black hole? I haven't seen a black hole since I showered with Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> ah, hey, my eyes look like two flaming meteors. I don't want to say my eyes are shot, but one time in Vegas, I went down on Sinatra's toupee. <laughs> I thought it was Dolores, my wife. Ah, Hey, what's this mission control? I'm still working on bowel control. <laughs> Ugh, my roids are hanging like tapestry. Hey, I gotta go, but you've been great on the space shuttle. Thank you. <sighs> Roger, mission control. Get, get me out of here. That's not an umbilical cord I'm using on my spacewalk. It's my bowels. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So that's what it would sound like with Bob Hope in space, huh? Are these people cannibals? Now, now, Chelsea. Why would you say that? Because the chief said he'd give anything to eat me. Hmm, he sounds a lot like your father. Your mother Hillary is very respected here. She has the one quality that is most coveted in our village. What's that? Wisdom? Compassion? No, a fat white ass. Oh, well. Your African name, Chelsea, is Kiala Abalafu. That's beautiful! What does it mean? Lanky pale girl with face of a wombat. Oh. Hey, Mom! Mandigo wants me to go into the forest with him! I think he's gonna let me have one of his pets! Why do you think that, Chelsea? Cause he said he's gonna give me his 12-inch Ubangi black snake! Oh, it's beautiful out here, Mandingo! By the way, what does your name mean? It means man with three legs. But you only have two legs. Oh, really? Wow! Chelsea, when we are through tonight, the whole village will call you Iwachalakanaya. Me? What does it mean? That means she who cannot sit for weeks. Ooh! Now grab your ankles, Chelsea, and I will demonstrate what your father does to your countrymen. Oh, oh, Mandingo! It's so big! I need two hands to hold it! Ah, oh, that's it, Chelsea. Now wrap your lips around it. Run like this? Yes, that's it. Now blow, Chelsea, blow! <laughs> Oh, be patient, Chelsea, and blow harder. 
bullseye. <laughs> wow, thanks for showing me how to use your blowgun, Nandingo. Anytime, Chelsea. We best go back to the village and find your mother. I wonder where she is. Maybe she's in this hut. Oh. Mom, what are you doing with Mandingo's sister? Oh, dear. You said you were going on a safari. No, no, I said before the day ends, I want to be deep in the bush. Well, you do what you want. I'm going to help Mandingo take care of a bad animal. What are you talking about, Chelsea? He wants me to spank his monkey. Well, just be back in time for dinner. Okay. Well, what are we having? I don't know about you, but I'll be having the African beaver. Hello, NEW. Uh, uh, yes, hi. Is this the program director? Uh, no. Who's oh, this? Oh, okay. No, I just have a little bit of a complaint. All right, who's this? Well, no, hi. My name's Paul. Uh, the two gentlemen that are oh, on the radio on, now. Pa Paul, I'm just an intern. Let me get the program director you want. Yeah, or somebody, please. Okay, hold on a minute, please. Engineering. Hi, engineering. How are you? Uh, could good. you guys do me a favor? What's, uh... What's the I'll problems? give you guys a hundred bucks cash under the table to pull a plug on them to blab them out. Come to play some music. Oh, th you want programming? This is engineering, sir. Oh, programming, please. Oh, please hold. Yeah, hello. Hey, uh, do me a favor. I'll give somebody in programming, whoever it is, I'll give them like 500 bucks under the table to shut these guys up for a little while, play some music or something. What are you talking about? Th this is the jock lounge. Oh, the jock, oh. Where the <laughs> DJs hang before they go on the air. Oh, no, they keep, they keep transferring me around. I, I want to talk to somebody. Um, I mean, these... These guys are a little bit ridiculous today. You know, let them, they call themselves disc jockeys. Let them throw on some discs. All right, hold on a minute. Something. You want the PD or the general manager? Uh, I guess the program director would be fine. I'm not going to bother the general manager. Maintenance. Yeah, you guys keep ping-ponging me around. Is there any way to shut those two dudes up? You want programming, sir? Sure, why not? I'll hang out and play the game. Go for it. Programming. Hi. Hi, what's up? Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to get. Uh, I'm trying to talk to somebody to to keep Tweedledum and Tweedledum just a little bit quieter and play some more tunes. Is that possible? Who's Tweedledee and Tweedledum? No, Tweedledum and Tweedledum. And them two yahoos you got blabbering on the radio. They sound like two old women from Long Island. Is there any way to keep them quiet, you two GJs, and just play a couple of more tunes? Is that possible? So you're looking for programming? I don't know who they got me looking for now. Uh, where am I? Where did I get now? No, I apologize. We're, we're having a problem with the phone system. Can you hold on one last second? Hey, no problem. I'm cool. All right, hold on. You've reached 1-900-SUCK-MY-G <laughs> for hot gay male sex. If you like big fists up your ass, stay on the line. You'll get a hot <laughs> right in your mouth to blow sp all over that face of yours. <laughs> It's a Charlie in the box. <laughs> yeah. The land of misfit toys, don't you know? <laughs> I love that scene. The land of misfit sex toys. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants a blow-up doll with no holes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> We're all misfits. <laughs> Look, a poor dildo with four heads. <laughs> no one wants that, don't you know? Now, this is the land of misfit adult toys. Misfit adult toys. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Benoit cubes. <laughs> Benoit cubes. Nobody wants Benoit cubes. Of course not. Look over here. <laughs> Sandpaper butt plugs. Ah, <laughs> Condoms lubricated with Ben Gay, don't you know? <laughs> no one wants those. I don't want to be an elf. I want to be a porn star. <laughs> I am Lord Comover, <laughs> mayor of the empire. <laughs> Please stop that dreadful spinning. I'll rust for sure. <laughs> I am very sympathetic to the Ewok community. <laughs> I had to confiscate Han Solo Millennium Falcon. He was drunk. <laughs> Uh-oh, here comes that pain in the ass Landau Calrissian Sharpton. <laughs> I just want justice for the rebellion. <laughs> I am Lord Comover. Hey, didn't I get the squeegee guys off of Tatooine? <laughs> I removed the five kitty dancers from the cantina on Alderaan. <laughs> Doesn't anybody thank me for that? <laughs> yes, I do. The comb over Death Star will launch saliva and destroy us. <laughs> get me to my lisp wing fighter. <laughs> 
Luke, I'm not your father. <laughs> I'm your uh, father's sister's second son-in-law. <laughs> you got to do the Darth uh, Vulgar. <laughs> the breathing as the mayor. <laughs> I am Lord Comover. <laughs> <laughs> Have him arrested. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Lord Comover. Lord Comover. <laughs> Let me taste it. Yeah, you taste that, Biatch. <laughs> Let me taste it. I'm a bad motherfucker. Lord <laughs> Comover. Let me taste it. Mm-hmm. The choice is easy. That's right. I'm Rudy G, I'm here to say, my hair looks like a roadkill toupee, I'm the number one man in NYC, so why are all the homeboys so pissed at me, I'm the R to the U to the D to the Y, a bad motherfucker make the food vendors cry, mm-hmm, get the carts off the streets you goddamn immigrants, <laughs> that's right, that's right, I'm a bad motherfucker, close the strip clubs and porno stores, I don't care, the cops bring my whores, Take on Al and Farrakhan. I'm plenty fucking tough for a skinny white man. So squeegee guy trying to turn a buck? Get yourself a job, you lazy fuck. Yeah, I'm the mayor man. I'm number one. I got a frigid wife and a big fat son. Don't give me no shit about Hillary. That fat ass bitch ain't no better than me. I can't bother with the homeless and sick. All the motherfuckers can suck my dick. I'm Rudy G. Yeah, I'm Rudy G, motherfucker. The Lispin Mayor, Rudy G, Lord Comover to the motherfuckers in the house. Word. I'll do this one for all the animal lovers since they like gerbil so much. Uh oh. It's a sing along, too, so everybody feel free to join in. Follow the bouncing balls. <laughs> when the game of life makes you feel like quitting, it helps a lot if you kill a kitten. Mark my words, cause from where I'm sitting, you can't go wrong if you kill a kitten. those phones. <laughs> <laughs> There's no crime that you'll be committing. I know the law. You can everybody kill a kitten. <laughs> and if you need yarn for that scarf you're knitting, you'll get plenty when you kill a kitten. Feed it turpentine <laughs> or break its spine. Crush it with your shoe as long as you kill a kitten. <laughs> kill a kitten. Listen up. If the one you love isn't quite as smitten, she like you better when you kill a kitten. And I'll quote. The Bible, cause that's where it's written. If ye loveth Jesus, ye must <laughs> kill a kitten. <laughs> Throw him at a train, make him snort cocaine, <laughs> drown him in a lake, bake a kitty cake, flush him down the can. Hit him with your van, stick some TNT up his cut booty, <laughs> do what you must do, as long as you kill a kitten, kill a kitten.
Killing kittens isn't easy And if the thought makes you feel queasy Grab a pitchfork from the shed And kill a puppy dog instead <laughs> Kill a kitten You got to kill a kitten A little furry kitten You got to kill a kitten you Kill a mother Kill a ton of fucking kill a little fucking daddy, kill him in the f- to eight six seven five three oh nine. <laughs> eight six seven five three oh nine. <laughs> Stephen Lynch, everyone. <laughs> Ant used to pick up a uh, little CB horse. <laughs> this <on>. was... <laughs> Come oh, on, man. Remember the big CB radio craze? I was like in my early teens, and it was a way to get girls, you know? Yeah. Breaker, breaker, one nine. <laughs> Go ahead, good buddy. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, breaker for a radio check. You're coming in four by four, good buddy. <laughs> Thank you. And then you're sitting there like, hey, what else can I say? Uh, Come right. back. I'm ten, 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 eight on the side waiting for you, good buddy. There. Because I didn't drive, so what was the use? You're just sitting in there. It can't be like, you know. I'm double nickels all the way. <laughs> looking out for the Smokies. Yeah. Oh, look at that. We got some pretty seat covers here today. Down the old black top. Keep her between the ditches. Good buddy. Yeah. Well, all right. I did that. What else can I say? Uh, hmm, I'm just on the CB. What was your handle, Ant? Oh, I got to explain this. <laughs> this just never, explaining never works on this show, does it? I was living in California at the time, and I was very uh, uh, equestrian. I had a horse, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And, and I used to ride, so I was the, the, the wrangler <laughs> with you. <laughs> hey, good buddy, you got the wrangler. <laughs> good buddy. <laughs> the butt wrangler. Ah, shut up! What was your handle? Uh, uh Diamond Dust. Diamond <laughs> Dust? Fag! That, that's worse What's than... Diamond Dust? That's worse than butt wrangler? It wasn't butt wrangler, it was the wrangler. Because a, a wrangler was a guy on a horse that, that got uh, together the uh, the livestock. <laughs> Diamond dust? I don't know. Hey, you got the diamond dust. <laughs> Hello, diamond dust. Butt plug, you out there? Good buddy. <laughs> Go ahead with your little <laughs> cute story. So then there was this uh, this girl that I used to uh, communicate with on, on the, the <laughs> Citizens Band. Yeah. And her handle was... Dreamweaver. <laughs> <laughs> you dick. Oh, Rick had to get the song and everything. Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver, this is the Wrangler you got your ears on. <laughs> <laughs> and she sounded hot. Yeah. So I invited her uh, down to uh, ride horses. The key, ladies and gentlemen. She sounded hot. <laughs> What, do you, <laughs> what does he look like, Ant? Ah, uh, shut up! <laughs> all right, so, so I was all excited for my little date, and I saddled up uh, my horse and and the other horse, and uh, kind of <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so, uh, all right, so you, you, I saddle up my horse, and, yeah. and I, I spend time, you know, brushing the horses, making sure they look all good and everything. And then I saddle up the other horse, and I, I take the reins and put around the saddle horn, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trailering the other horse, you know, down to meet her by the riverbed where we were going to ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, she comes uh, walking up. 
And I see kind of in the distance. And I'm like, okay, that must be her. All right, she, now, wait, wait. Now, you did say that you had the 10 and everything, and you were hoping to score in the woods, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I right. packed, like, a whole thing. Uh, uh, Saddlebags are all packed up with some a couple of beers. And I had bed rolls and a tent just in case things went well because we had a bunch of hills to ride up in and stuff. We're going to camp out with my dream weaver. <laughs> dream weaver, tell your mom um, you're going to be uh, spending the night, dream weaver. <laughs> tell her... Tell her you're at a friend's house, because we're going to camp out. This is the Wrangler. All going out. I'm 10, 10, 10, 8. On the side, Dreamweaver. Looking forward to my little date. Yeah. Well, she comes up. Even before I was gravely disappointed, the horse that had a carrier looked pissed. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I should take the saddle off of the horse, put it on her, and let the horse ride her. <laughs> Dreamweaver. <laughs> she was huge. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes, I was. I was gravely disappointed. <laughs> Uh, so Dreamweaver so was like, a are you are you a, a wrangler? Yes. Please don't be Dreamweaver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dreamweaver. All right, let's let's go for a ride. So we we went like uh, up and down the riverbed for about an hour. I was like, oh look at the time. <laughs> Here I had, like, bed rolls on the back of this thing. It was like I was Paw Ingalls going up to, <laughs> to Walnut Grove. I was going to go over the river for a week. I had firearms. I was going to hunt her food. <laughs> then I realized, looking at it, I'd need to bag a moose. Yeah. <laughs> Feeding her would be forget about it. <laughs> Gee, okay. No, there's not many bison left on the plane. <laughs> I could live off your thigh for a couple of weeks. I can't breathe. I got to tell you, to this day, when I hear Dreamweaver, I think of the whole day how happy I was and psyched and how disappointed I was uh, riding back to the ranch that day. Oh, that's funny. Mm. All right. Very good story, Anthony. Thank, Thank you, Wolfie.